everybody. Welcome to the Stamina Podcast. My name is Ryan Wilson. My name is Levi Lobo. And my name is Christian Puckett. And today we talked about how our upbringing shaped who we are today. We talked about fatherhood. And then we talked about acting. So enjoy the podcast. just like kind of start and then we started and that's the start yeah I feel like i've listened to like three of your podcasts which ones uh one of them was like drugs yeah. faith drugs depression mm. and then madison and then maybe your like most recent one was just the two of you yeah. oh cool but i'm not sure yeah. what it was titled but I feel like they usually start with a, shall we start? <laughs> like, you know, like <laughs> yeah, I laugh, so you know I, I laugh sure. a lot. I laugh a lot. Well, so, giggles. It's all right. It's all right. Um, yeah, so tell us about your name and, and sure. who you are and what, what you do. Sure. Um, and it better be good. <laughs> uh, I am Ryan Wilson. Um, I am an aspiring actor, which means that I am an actor. Um, so you start with the actor sure okay that's mm-hmm. the first thing you say when you introduce yourself it's because my other job is just completely secondary well i mean you're a father yeah you're a biker yeah. you're i'm an athletic gentleman yeah um father husband you're yeah. a son and i'm a son yeah I'm <laughs> still still a grandson nice got one more still kicking you know hey me too one yeah, and she actually listens to the podcast. Hi, Nana. Really? Yeah. What's up, Nana? <laughs> you rock. At least she listened to the first I, I, one. She may have fallen off. I don't know. Sure. I could say hi to Dewey, but she's never going to listen to this. <laughs> hey, Dewey. <laughs> Is that Dewey? Everybody says that. No, it's D-O-E-Y, but it's like pizza dough. Like Dewey. Dewey. My cousin Dewey. couldn't say granny growing up. Then she was Dewey. And now she's Dewey. just Dewey to everybody. Oh, that's cute. Dewey. Yeah. So you're an actor. Mm-hmm. You are uh, from another country. Correct. It sounds like. <laughs> yeah, from. Uh, I would. I mean, to Americans, I just say I'm from Ireland, but Dang. Northern Ireland. But Northern Ireland. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to be like a proud prod, which I'm really not. So what's the difference care. to us, um, uh, idiot Americans? Essentially, um, Protestant Northern Irish identifies as being British. Um, Catholic Northern Irish would just identify as being Irish because there's unionists and nationalists mm. being part of the union Protestant but it's, so it's, it's like not, founded it's, in some level of, of religion? You would think but I, if it's if it ever was that it's certainly not that now it's just oh. people hanging on to it so it's mm. nonsensical in my mind but yeah as a blanket term, I just say I'm Irish because yeah. And then people are like, "You don't sound Irish," and I'm like, "It's because it's not your like conventional, like, oh, I'm from down in Dublin, <laughs> right? That Dude, kind of talk." You yeah. straight up sound Irish to me, whatever that means. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, sure, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sophisticated <laughs> enough to know yeah. the difference between <laughs> sure. Northern Irish. You don't sound Irish. proper Irish. You sound Northern Irish. Yeah. Well, then there's also like, so my hometown is Ballymena. Same hometown as Liam Neeson. Um, and people from that part of Northern Ireland probably sound more like farmers than those people would from Belfast and kind of the surrounding towns and counties and stuff like that. So would it be comparison in like America to like um, somebody who grew up in a rural area? Mm-hmm. They would have a different dialect than somebody who grew up in like New York or like California. Sure. I you mean, know? because I mean, Northern Ireland is so small, I feel like. Well, I mean, it's broken up into, like, villages. So there's, like, Galagorm, Kalibaki, Ahokal, Brasheen, um, and people will... I mean, those those villages are five minutes away from each other, but people can sound distinctly different wow. in those places. And you'll mm-hmm. find that pretty much all over Northern Ireland, where people will not really sound the same, and they're about 20 minutes down the road. That's 20 minutes down the road is, like, kind of a long drive in Northern Ireland, whereas 20 minutes here is just... Come yeah. to your eyes. Dude, 20 right, minutes. Yeah. Like, I lived in California for four years, and 20 minutes in California was like 
just down the block like yeah. just period like so close because sure. everything out there like you hang out i'm going out i'm leaving tomorrow Absolutely. um and i'm like it's going to be an hour drive from the airport to my friend's house and then from my friend's house to the dentist it's an hour drive and you know it's just like but that's normal versus here it's like okay 30 minutes is like pretty normal but there it sounds like it's even shorter so people stay more like closer ge- geographically yeah so like we have a we have a holiday home up even further north um in a place called port stewart and it's i mean i would say it's like 25 minutes away and but i remember growing up that felt like a crazy long drive whereas now i like i think i've driven my kids we've gone to like durango and I don't think I've ever taken them further than Durango, which is like three and a half hours. But that, like, I feel like if I was, if it was me being that young, driving that far, it would have killed me. Yeah, Ooh, I remember driving to Red River as a kid, and you know now it's like yeah, <clears throat> two Are and a half hours, yet? three hours, but it just felt like forever. Dude, I remember driving to just like an hour out of town at, when I was young, and I was so bored. Yeah, just so completely bored, I, and it was the worst. It was like torture. You know, it was like the the worst experience ever. But now it's like, oh, I've driven. Like I sometimes I drive out to California or drive some, you know, Colorado or whatever, and it's like twelve hours, and you're just like, okay, here but it goes. I I've driven so I've driven back from LA in one like one stretch one time uh, when I went there like I stopped in Phoenix, and then did the rest for the next day. But then on the way back, I just did all day LA to here, and it was great. Yeah, it was like eleven a, hours, and I loved yeah. it. Yeah. Just by myself, and I was just like, "Dang, yeah!" Living my own concert, get to listen to yeah. podcasts, music, whatever you want. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so, the the elephant in the room is how does a, a Northern Irish gent like yourself end up in Albuquerque, New Mexico? Humble Albuquerque, New Mexico. Of course, yeah. Um, so I went to uni um, in London. Wait, say that one more time. Uni college. Okay. University. Uh, yeah. Uni. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really funny. My mom last night was chatting to her and she said, she was taught by like an old economics teacher from my school and she was like, yeah, he's he's head of the Illumi. <laughs> I was like, the what? She's like, the Illumi. And I was like, she's like, oh yeah, old, old pupils and stuff like that. And I was like, alumni? <laughs> but Alumni. you said that very but, American sound. Sure, but I don't. I don't. I guess I don't even know how it's supposed to sound when you like for a, a Northern Irish person to say it. But I was just like mm. alumni. I feel like I'm an alum of Balamina Academy, but you're not an alum. I don't even know. If she knew how to say Alumi. it. Right, <laughs> yeah, she just doesn't know how to <laughs> yeah. say it, which is okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, I went to uni in London, um, and then um, met a girl who my now wife she um was studying abroad for a year doing anthropology and she ended up at the same uni i was at and then we um were both looking for a church in london and then ended up liking the same one um then we ended up just commuting back and forth to that church like twice a week spending a lot of time together just the two of us one thing led to another and then got together she went back um here to finish off her degree, she was at UNM. So she was from here originally? Yeah, okay. correct. Um, what brought her out there? Just studying abroad. Just studying yeah. abroad, which is random, okay. Yeah. I think it was her and, like, another guy who we kept, like, bumping into. She didn't this. She wasn't necessarily <laughs> friends with that guy, but we, like, kept bumping into him in just random places, and then I bumped into him, like, three or four times here in Albuquerque because he's over to come back as well. So he was from here, went to study yep. u- uni out there, mm-hmm. and then came back... <laughs> yeah and then okay and then you see him around town yeah just around. <laughs> it's been a while but it was just for a while it was just seeing him everywhere um but yeah the, then we did long distance for like a year and a half and what was really good is that was kind of skype had already like become a thing but then viber i don't know if you guys ever used that app viber mm-hmm. but it just viber no it had just become like a international thing a vibe yeah, where it's just, I mean, it's like, essentially maybe like what WhatsApp is now, but sure. Viber, uh, okay. I feel like maybe Viber was pre-WhatsApp, hmm. but it was just like internet calls, internet texts, so I've just... So it's like WeChat, have you seen that one? No. That's like the China's thing. Uh, it's, But also it's crazy because you can pay people over it, you can, it's oh. like a social media app, 
it's like everything because it's owned by the Chinese government or it's through them. Um, but yeah, like they're building social profiles on that. And then, wait, WeChat? Yeah, WeChat. I think Shillian sent me the files over WeChat. Yeah, they're corrupted. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're watching. Uh, so you caught a vibe on Viber caught for a, a year and a half, mm-hmm. and then I would just like come back and forth here. She would come back and forth there, and then, and then I graduated in 2014, and then after all the visa stuff got sorted, I moved over here, got married, and then been here ever since. It Did you have a, to go traditional visa style, or since you're married, then it was good? So we. We did the the fiance visa. Nice. I don't know. Um, I guess we have friends who did the marriage visa, and it seems like it can happen where you get married and then you have to leave, pending um, other stuff. But the fiance yeah. visa, you just come, you get married within ninety days, and then you can just start the green card process and stay in country. Cool. Because the visa provides like a one time entry, and if you leave. Which we find out the hard way because we lost our honeymoon. Um, oh, but if you oh, leave, oh. you like revoke your visa. So I just stayed, and then the green card process took too much time as well. So is Are a green nightmare? is a green card like you? What is a green card? I don't know what a green card is. I know it's something to do with like working here, right? <laughs> yes. Or so is it like citizenship? No, 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 not not citizenship at all. Because it's, I saw the movie. <laughs> Have yeah. you seen the, the movie Green Card. No, I've never seen Great that. Movie. Didn't know it was one called green. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, no, so I am a lawful permanent resident. Okay. A resident alien. Congratulations. Yeah. When you, when, like... So you're an alien. RA. Sure. <laughs> 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 no, but alien, they call you an alien, which is just such a strange thing. Yeah. Um, you're a resident alien, though. Mm-hmm. So you... <laughs> and I feel like it was, like... It's silly that it's this way. We have um, We have friends who... They did the marriage visa, and I guess the husband, who was the one coming to America, I think he was f- from India, and his process was like way harder than mine, apparently because I'm just privileged. Some random white, <laughs> like British white. <laughs> They're guy. like, "Come on in, we like you." Yeah, I mean, it just it, it seemed we like my wife was so diligent. She like prepared like all these documents, got all the evidence to present to them that we were in fact like a, a couple. And then I like went to the London embassy, and then it was really funny when I was there because we like there was this big long line, and then Hugh Jackman just like rolled up, and they just like <laughs> took him past everyone in the line. It was like what the frig? Like I get that he's a celebrity, mm. but wait, he was getting citizenship. Uh, he must have just like been getting a visa or something like that to shoot uh, something in the UK. Oh, okay. I don't know if he lives there. I have no idea. That's um, weird how people can just have uh, enough social uh, power to. Hop the line. Do what they want. Yeah. Is that when you wanted to become an actor? You're like, I want to yeah, hop yeah. the line. I wanna... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's. I mean, it, and it was funny because it wasn't as though you're like at TSA and there's like a pre-check section where you just like go faster. Yeah. There was literally just a line and no one else was going through it except for Hugh Jackman. Mm. Freaking Hugh Jackman. Um, I hear he's nice. I don't know. I don't know. Didn't get to talk to him because he just skipped the line. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why though they they have some obligation to. Because if he's in line, then that might cause people to start, oh, hey, what's your sure. name? And then it's like people are more interested in talking with him than, than right. like just getting their it. visa. So they're like, just get him through so people like stop. I mean, I don't know. People were pretty miserable in that line. I know I was. <laughs> <laughs> but no, when I got in, I um, had this huge file of evidence that my wife had prepared. And then I get in there, I'm sitting for like 45 minutes, wherever it is. And then they call my name and I go up. Or they, sorry, I mean, not my name. I was a number at that point, of course. Um, and I go up and then he just, I think he asked me like two questions, which were not like pressing questions, yeah. just more like, what are you here for today? Like something dumb. And then he was like, all right, open up the file, grab the first picture. And it was just something to the effect of like, oh, is this you and your fiance? And I was like, yeah. He was like, okay, great. <laughs> like you guys were studying for the test and then yeah. it was, and like, it was like, easy. easy pass. This like massive file. He opens it up, looks at the first picture and is like, is this you? Yep. I think that's Great. probably why, though, because you came in there with a lot of stuff. Sure. Like, that shows that you guys are diligent, shows that you guys cared. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. So. My wife was very diligent. I can't take credit. <laughs> I, I mean, I wanted, obviously, to do it, but she's the preparer and kind of the guy who just does stuff off the cuff. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah. you. So what, what year did you land in, in Albuquerque? 
Um, so our wedding was on August 9th, 2014. Um, we were just waiting for the visa to like, actually be given to me. Um, and they don't tell you just until they give it to you. I, I was oh, wow. given my visa July 22nd. So I booked a ticket that night and then flew out July 23rd wow. to nice. do what little help for preparation for my wedding that I could. <laughs> when I was your this. wedding? So when was your wedding after that? It was August 9th. So like oh, two, so very like quick. Two weeks later. Yeah. Dang. So like, wow. every, like, like I said, they did all the prep and I just... You, just, you flew in and <laughs> walked down on the a whim, carpet. you know. Yeah. <laughs> 90 day fiance. Yeah. That was me. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen that show, Love is Blind? Yeah. We, it's good. Because it released at the start of the pandemic, did it mm-hmm. not? So, yeah, we, yeah. we like, we FaceTimed um, my brother and sister in law and watched it with them. Like, oh, everybody was cool. doing, like, people were doing, like, FaceTime watch parties. So, we did that with Love is Blind. Nice. It was pretty common. What is it? Dude, it's a trippy show. I watched that with a uh, girlfriend that broke up with me. It was great. Yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, what is it about? So the girlfriend <laughs> was a... No, I'm just um, it's about uh, people that t- start talking, but they can't see each other. So basically, like, they're in these pods. So it's like The Voice. Yeah, but you marry somebody. <laughs> and so, you click the button and your chair turns around and you're like oh you're like oh shit this is that that's weird Why yeah it was cool thing? though because it was just because it because it's weird you know because they, so people lived in pods for for what was it, like a month or something and then so um, long ago since i watched it yeah same <laughs> but i just it just reminded me of like just quick quick marriage like making a decision you're with this person and um but you've been with your wife for uh Eight years now. Yeah, this year will be eight years. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it. Wow. Going strong, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two kids, too. Two kids, yeah. One just turned one um, last month. Well, no, actually, still this month, like two weeks ago. And then the other is going to be three on Wednesday. Wow. Yeah. Nice. One and three. One and three. So I went to uh, Astro's one year birthday party. That was mm-hmm. fun. Mm-hmm. Did you have fun? <laughs> of course I had fun. What are you talking about? Blast. Blast. No, I'm just I'm entering into uh you know this new position of being a dad that has a kid that likes to see other kids and then sure. that puts you in the position to watch your kid, but then uh, there's other parents watching their kids and so you watch your kids together and you have to interact in this <laughs> This way of just like, eh, look, look at them go. Yeah, how old is your kid? Oh, it only gets harder. Let me tell you. Yeah, I, f- I feel like there's a show called Blue that we watch. Um, well, we watch our my kids watch. You watch we, it? We watch all. It's actually really good. Um, <laughs> no, and there's like an episode where like the kids go to the park, and then there's the dad has brought his kid Bluey, and then there's another dad who's brought brought his kid as well and then the kids start playing together and then they, just, they do really just look at each other just like <laughs> <laughs> like that but then like they like develop a friendship over time but it's just yeah. like that's kind of how it all starts because it's, it's just like <laughs> yeah because th- there's no necessarily like pressure to interact with that parent but at the same time it's like if your kids hit it off it's like here we go okay maybe i should hey. get their number yeah. maybe i should get our kids together <clears throat> Like, you feel, like, some obligation to be friends with the person because your kids are friends. Yeah. That's fun. Well, kids are just, like, so, like, unself-aware. And so they'll just, like, walk up to another kid with a ball and then just start, like, playing together, which is cool. But then it's, it's like, the the standoff between the parents of just, like, do we... (laughs) There's, like, this moment where it's, like, okay, now we have to say something because our kids are, like talking or interacting somehow mm-hmm. and now the, the the question to ask first is how old are yours <laughs> or like, how old and that's just like the icebreaker and then you start so down like, this, like have you guys pictured like you're gonna put your kids in sports you think if i if aesop was yeah. down to play sports i would put him in sport sure because i feel like that would be i'm just picturing like like if your kids are competing in sports and then like the mm. difference of friendship that would be yeah, created right, from sure. that versus yeah. like they're on the same team, you know? Right. Like so all know, of a sudden they're like your like enemy or yeah. something. I didn't I never really thought about that, but like I feel like it would be funny if you run into the situation where like 
I feel like you would never really take kids sport too seriously until they get to a certain level obviously but as there's like this parent rivalry where it's like your kid needs to pick up some slack <laughs> yeah or else is it the situation where it's like man my kid sucks <laughs> yeah <laughs> that would be the, the most embarrassing is just when your kid is like always getting hurt or crying or not yeah not pulling their weight man yeah. I was probably that kid yeah for, yeah a little I while I thought you were tough I got no. Well, the first time I was playing football, I remember we did like a tackling drill, and this is not f- football, like sure soccer. It's yeah, yeah. it's not soccer. Mm-hmm. It's like tackle football, whatever American football, and um, the bad one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the less popular <laughs> yeah, one, yeah. the one that gives everyone brain damage. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. CTE. Um, yeah. The uh, but I remember doing the tackling drill, and I was just like this little kid that was like insecure and scared of other people, and I have to go up and tackle this bigger dude yeah and uh, i remember going and tackling him and then i i tackled him but i felt so bad like i had this like moral like dilemma inside of did i just do that yeah and so i walked away from the whole group and i just like cried for a little bit by myself until the coach came over and he's like good job and i was like it just was like such weird mixed emotions yeah i was like i hurt that kid yeah it's like no that's what you're supposed to do yeah i played flag football for like four years like indoor flag football and that was a lot of fun because you're literally just yanking a flag off of somebody's like belt and so it's kind of for the most part contactless but then after that i i think i was in eighth grade i did one season of yaffle what is that young american football league and i it was a one and done thing (laughs) tackle football was absolutely not for me i was definitely the wussy kid i I legitimately just asked the coach, like, what's the what's the minimum amount of plays I could be in? <laughs> and just, like, what's the least I can participate and still be on the team? And it was it was essentially six uh, plays, or six mm. plays, yeah, six plays a, a game. Yeah, six snaps a game was the minimum that you had to be in in order to stay on the team. And so I would just, like, you know, I was the cornerback or the wide receiver. I didn't touch the ball the entire season. And I hated every minute of it. Oh, How old were you? I was probably 13 or 14, somewhere around there. Were you like being made to do it? Yeah, my dad. I mean, obviously it was just one season, but it was like, well, I, I have to oh, finish paid, the season. Like paid for the season. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you're, so you're going to play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I, we, and luckily I ended up on, I ended up being placed on the best team mm. so we went really far we did really good who was your team no thanks to me though it was the rio rancho rams i think i remember playing them yeah because we were on like the worst team what highland highland yeah yeah which is funny because like half the players <laughs> on our remember? team were like six foot six yeah and i was like 13 dude it's all the like, affluent like rio rancho kids that are just yeah we yeah. were we were a good team no thanks to me though <laughs> So you're an actor. <laughs> yeah. That was, actually, I was going to stay on that. My, oh, okay. My thought yeah, for let's, a let's go back. Um, <laughs> yeah, so football. Were you, like, made <laughs> to do a bunch of stuff? Well, okay, so you have to practice, I think, four times a week, four or five times a oh, week. But, like, not just that, but, like, over, like, your childhood, were you, like, made to do sports? Or was it, like, a, hey, I, no, I like sports. Let's, I, let's do more of this. No, I think it was, it was never forced upon me. I played soccer for, like, three years. Um, I was like a really young kid. I played flag football. Um, I I don't think my parents ever forced anything upon me except mm-hmm. music. But even that, like, it wasn't like you have to play music or else you're out of the family. It was just yeah. like, hey, this is what we do as a family, and you kind of like, you don't have any other option. Sure. Uh, but it was never like authoritarian dictatorship. You got mm-hmm. to do this. Yeah. Mm. Not that I like I'm complaining, but I I had the opposite kind of. So you were forced to do stuff. In essence, yeah. So like, I ever since I was either six or seven, I played rugby, um, which people think is like a brutal sport, but it's not. Um, and because so my dad would like go and play golf on Saturday mornings, and then my mom would just have a Saturday morning to herself, which like at the time I probably thought was dumb, but. Now that I have kids, I'm like, good on you. <laughs> yeah. Taking that time. Um, and then my uncle was actually like a coach, so he would just take us. And then similar 
to what you talked about and being like the kid who like hit a kid first and he was bigger I was like I was taller but I've always been as like slim as I am and then the first time I was just like thrown in rugby I was just giving the ball and then ran it a guy who ended up being a good friend later on and in my teenage years and he just like tackled me and I just bawled like yeah. bawled like I hated it so much but then like I was just made to go every Saturday yeah and then you get through that first like initial oh it wasn't the contact first it, it was, thing yeah yeah but even still I like didn't like to get tackled and to this day probably I'm not like a good tackler but I at least know how to do it um, but then when I became a teen- teenager it became so much I loved it and to this day like I still love it but I hated cool. it at the time so you're a big rugby guy now big rugby guy played a little bit like here uh, for like half a season but then you started crying I started crying because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> the Americans were too good yeah. no, I'm just kidding. you play in town and I know one, yeah. of, my, one of my friends p- plays in town so I haven't like I said haven't played for a while um, but I'm like in a group chat with um, the Albuquerque Yardvarks and I'll hopefully get back to it once my kids are old enough to be able to watch and understand then I'll just retire Retire from from contact sport. Oh, okay. <laughs> they retire from being a parent once they can <laughs> yeah. like, understand themselves. No, I just I don't know. I'm just in America, I'm just like I don't want to get really hurt. I have to pay for that out of pocket. Yeah, my kind of casual contact yeah. sport. Wait, so do you lose your like benefits of like London? Because there's healthcare there, right? Yeah, like the NHS, the National Health Service. Yeah, yeah that's it's, like it's a, a tax. Free. Yeah, it's a, well, it's yeah, through taxes. Taxes, yeah. But you lose the rights to that by becoming an American citizen. Which I'm not. Which he's not. Oh, you're a... He's an alien. So, but I th- but I th- you still can't benefit... You couldn't go back and then get... Right. I, I mean, I'm not sure. I haven't got... I haven't... I mean, I haven't been in the doctor in a long time. But I haven't gone home to, like, find yeah. out what's what, you know, so... Dang. Yeah. So, yeah... Um, I mean, I'm curious to talk about uh, acting stuff. Yeah, let's I've talk been doing about that for, Like, you probably don't give... Uh, let's keep too... talking about tackle football, honestly. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, uh, it's, I, it's rugby, I guess okay? I, I yeah. do want to talk about the acting, but I'm more, I think I was more speaking to, like, being forced to do stuff. Were you forced to act? No, in fact, I was... That was discouraged, your decision. Discouraged. Oh, yeah. Oh, so. yeah. Um, but my wife was, like given every opportunity to try like every different sport mm-hmm. whereas I was just like you're playing rugby I was like okay uh-huh. and I'm like I like to think that I'll give my kids every opportunity to do yeah. anything with, with, they want do you think there was a sport that you would have preferred like ice skating I'm, I mean <laughs> just <laughs> throwing it actually, out there I actually got coached in tennis for quite a while uh-huh. so I got like decent but then I, d- I didn't I couldn't remember why I gave it up, but my mom recently told me that it was my choice and I just couldn't be arsed to go anymore. I was like, all right. But, I mean, it would have been fun to play that more, but I don't think I would have been, like, a pro or anything like that. So, yeah, definitely not. Yeah, tennis is, no. tennis is going to make a lot of money, though, if you're good. Tennis is, like, one of those sports that... Um, <laughs> some of those guys... And it's a one-person sport... And it's mostly like your own. You're you're competing with somebody else, but you're kind of. It's kind of more of your mental game, mm-hmm. at least from my experience, and uh, which is very little. But, um, but my one of my best friends growing up, Ben Sasser. You remember Ben Sasser? I remember Ben. Yeah. Good old Benny. He played, uh, and his dad was like, very serious. Like, like his, making him do it. Like making him do it, and training, and training, and sure. training, and like like saying you're going to be like the next. Blah, blah, whoever the best person is you know like like crazy sure. uh crazy seriousness to it yeah and i think that that was interesting seeing the effect on ben because he never felt like he was good sure. enough for that at least sure. from what i've seen you know and he was amazing at does it. he still play tennis i think so but he's like he's he, you know he has a desk job and he doesn't really exercise as much so I think yeah little, did either of you ever <laughs> watch the tiger woods hbo documentary Mm-mm. no Man, I won't go into it, but it's basically just like about a father forcing his. It's, it's more about Tiger Woods' dad, uh, like, yeah. and that that parenting method or style of creating the best athlete in the world or one of the best athletes in the world mm. at the cost of your son 
and like to the detriment yeah. of his like mental health and uh i mean obviously everybody remembers everything that what happened uh he just went crazy i, I mean at, at a certain point like he was just so I thought, I thought all he did was like sleep with the stripper i mean not that that's like a like a not a big deal but like i mean i think it was just like he was having I don't remember. It was like affairs, and then he was just partying. Oh, like he would go to Vegas okay. and just go off the rails and get into trouble and drink and drive and crash into the things. And oh. so, like he 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 probably didn't have those experiences as a kid mm. because he wasn't allowed to because his father was just like so hard and strict on him, like with him. And then once he kind of realized that he had autonomy and he could do whatever he wanted, and he just went super hard. I always uh, pictured him as like a very clean like well know. he was but then he had like a five year period I'm, I'm i think around five year period where he went super hard but then it kind of seems like he kind of came around again and now he's kind of back ish to being a serious golfer that's like taken seriously and winning awards and stuff again i feel like i either like read or heard that he was just like super dedicated but then when he got to the level just started mixing with like michael jordan and like other top athletes and then <laughs> pills yeah other things yeah oh, drugs like maybe just kind of got out of hand yeah yeah so. anyway it's just a his father created something that was it's it's just a, it's an interesting question is it is it okay to force your kids i guess you're you're kind of taking ownership of your kids and dictating what their career is going to look like at the cost of what they want to do and um yeah i would i would hope i i mean but also I'm, like to to on the flip coin if i didn't play football like i would be a completely different person and i hated it but i was so grateful that i did yeah if i didn't play contact sports if i didn't play basketball if i didn't if i wasn't put into these situations that i necessarily didn't didn't necessarily want to be in but i did uh because it grew uh stamina didn't stamina didn't in me because i was able to uh, push through my discomfort. Yeah, so there is a so. there's a line because I my parents never really like force force me as much as my older sisters to like play drums and play music. But I know for Shailene, my sister specifically, they forced her to play piano, and they and she, you have piano lessons and you have to practice. Mm -hmm. And I think in the moment she said that she hated it, but now that she's an adult, she says that she's really thankful that her that she 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 was consistent her, that our parents were consistent in, in enforcing because part of that is good for you like to like it's good for you to do stuff you don't want to do and it's yeah. going to benefit you in the long run but what's the line between yeah at what cost allowing your kids to to go down endeavors they want to do and then maybe finding something that they're good at and then forcing them to continue to do that like i feel like the question goes the other way as well where it's like what's it like for that athlete at the highest level like i'm so good at this sport but i just hate it because i've just been pushed to do it my whole life whereas your average joe is like gosh i was good at that i wish i was forced to do that it's like yeah two sides of the coin i wish i was really good at one thing yeah. i'm the average guy that's like man i wish i could i was like super good but it's fun to be good at, at like things. flipping coins or something sure like, why you know, that sounds boring thing. <laughs> <laughs> not good at something like important <laughs> Just kind of like, you're good at climbing the rock i'm good at climbing yeah the, but i'm not like slab. i'm not like jorge who's competing at the just competed in salt lake for the world cup you know yeah but do i am want, almost do you want to be a competitive climber no it's the mental health. <laughs> well, it's the mental health aspect for you, right? It's yeah, just like it's it's, it's the all about thing. like just the the fact that if I'm pissed, if I'm whatever, I can go climb, and it, everyone goes away, you know. Except today, when I showed up and like, you know, people just kept talking to me, and I'm just like, man, I just want to climb. Yeah. So then I can only climb for like 15 minutes. Do so you ever throw headphones in? I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't like wireless headphones because I don't. <laughs> EMF. Dude. Okay. So I've been like trying to also limit my. EMF. Uh, what is that? Electro. Uh, um, Electromagnetic field or something. Uh, like that? The frequency, or? basically, like. Um, well, this is doing it right now too. But um, right. like uh, headphones, wireless headphones use Bluetooth to yeah. to send signals, and and uh, it's mathematically, it's actually not that bad for you. Like yeah. it's actually not. But um, 
high levels of it is bad i think so. chronic use of anything even if it's if if it's a one percent if it affects you one percent over like a five-year period it's still doing something and so it's like do you want to err on the side of being cautious or do you want to just go all into something that could potentially have some effects 10 15 20 years down the line yeah i hear you but i think that the argument with the the bluetooth is so much like this light is fine but if this light was like a thousand times stronger it would like be heating your it would, your your skin would be burning yeah and so that's the difference is it's the same light but if it just has a scaled like okay, a magnitude but, more but what it, about it would, it would proximity be. so it's like I, i'm okay with my phone <clears throat> being at arm's reach but chronically having bluetooth headphones in your ears like do you think proximity um that kind of weirds me out it's like the bluetooth headphones it's just so close to your operating system of your brain like you know um yeah. i don't know and, and it's I also scary there's because there's yet, well there is science there's uh, there was also a study by the cia in the 1970 something called the gateway the gateway experience or the gateway um Experiment, the gateway experiment, maybe some. I don't know, whatever. But if you look it up, I think it was like 1977, and basically they talk about how you can alter people's uh, consciousness level through uh, binary beat, uh, basically lowering because our brains put out a specific uh, frequency, and so and our brains want to mimic a frequency that is near it by nature. That's what we do. Um, so what they can do is if they can lower your brain's uh, frequency by putting a low beat frequency in your ears that will bounce back and forth that will that your brain will start to mimic and then lower your consciousness or higher consciousness to be able to basically their argument is to tap into the natural frequencies that the earth puts off because the way bluetooth works is it, it basically there's there's frequencies moving and it sends information binary binary broken down into ones and zeros um, on a specific frequency le length. So it'll be like, Z -Z -Z, and then it sends that information and then it transmits it on the other side. Um, so what they argue is that you can lower your frequency to that of the Earth's and then have that Earth will be the carrier wave for information and you can send it through space. Hmm. Anyways, there was a bunch of government funding that went to that. <laughs> I mean, it's really <laughs> fascinating. Um, for, and, for somebody who doesn't know the science behind it, um, but let me argue this real quick. Oh, okay, go for it. Yeah. And, and the so Facebook Meta, whatever Metaverse thing, whatever, what were they doing? The Oculus. Yeah. Um, in those rooms, because I was in those, I was playing in that world a little bit, and it's trippy. And I don't know if you guys have been in those things, but you mean virtual reality? Virtual reality. Yeah, yeah. I argue that they are using that same strategy to lower your uh, awareness so that you don't, so that that, that you're tricked easier. Um, and I think it works because You're tricked. <laughs> what are they tricking you into doing? Um, they're just lowering your ability to perceive uh, the space around you because you're not your brain isn't yeah. uh, vibrating at its natural state, which would be used to interacting with the space around at a specific frequency. Yeah, it's now like dipped into the the, the frequency of of the Earth because yeah. the Earth transmits a specific frequency too. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Dude, VR is crazy. I, have you ever played Half Life, Alex, or Alex Half Life, or whatever it's no. called? It's 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 essentially like the the first good VR game because there's ones where you like you know you're on a roller coaster or you're standing on a plank and like, but and those are I mean those are fun too. But this one isn't actually like very involved spooky horror game. And I played the first probably like half of it because Campbell bought a Valve. Uh, whatever oh, he's the, on the valve the valve um yeah whatever he bought a really nice vr headset and he had it set up at our house for a few months and so i did that and dude it was so much fun but it also afterwards you feel kind of manipulated and yeah. you kind of feel like um yeah i definitely entered this like realm for about a couple like for a couple hours and then you just step out and then you kind of just Right now, it's in its infancy, so it's like, oh, it's kind of cool to, you know, dip it in and out of it or mess around with it, but damn, what's that going to be like in 10 years, 15 bro. years when Aesop is like, hey, I want this VR headset, and then he's just like in his room all day on it. Like, that's a really scary That'll thought. That'll be work. 
Do you mean people, it's like, like it'll break down? Or that's just how people work. Yeah, people go into their yeah. room and they do. They live in this world and they do. Things. Yeah, is it like the feeling where you're still there? When like similar to that of when like you step off a trampoline and you still feel like you're bouncing. Whoa! Right? Kinda, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you kind of like are dizzy and you have to learn. You have to like calibrate back to the earth. I think it's the, the feeling earth. that you were tricked into thinking this other reality was real. Sure. But it's cool. And then you come out of it and you're <laughs> like, oh shit! Like. Oh yeah, this is what's real, yeah. you know. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that they're utilizing that that binary uh, syncing. It's so called you, it's called hemi sync. Do you think Do you think that's a bad thing? I mean, I I, I think the argument of bad or good is is in that is uh, I don't know. I think it's a I think it's a trick, and I think that it's a, I think it's, it's stealing it's, your attention for a couple hours, and yeah. that's very valuable. It's these putting days. you in a. It's putting you in a. Uh, Manipulatable state. It's the same yeah. thing that like hypnosis yeah. does, and these yeah. other stra strategies. Like, same what was thing. that? What was that documentary they put on Netflix that was like a phenomenon like a year ago? Oh, the social dilemma. Yeah, yeah, that one I don't was know good. If I watched the whole thing, but I guess that's what yeah. they're trying to do. I mean, yeah, it's all about reasons. attention. Yeah, and that's probably the most valuable. That's what we want too. Give us your attention. <laughs> you guys want all the clicks watch. you can get, right? I mean, oh my God, we're on Reels, we're on YouTube Shorts, we're on Spotify, we're on Apple Podcasts. Yeah. We're, on, we're yeah. on everything, man. But Okay, so, so it's like you have to play the, the game, though. Yeah, you're doing the research. You we're guys gonna, have to get as many clicks as you can. We're going to make Dude, a VR experience of the podcast so that somebody <laughs> can just sit here with us. <laughs> Trust me, it's very cool. boring in this room. You don't want to be in here. <laughs> it's a nice tree outside. It looks nice. The tree? Yeah. Nice pine, right there. nice oh, cedar. Thanks. We got this fiddly fig. I don't know if that's tree, though. I don't know if that's That's not my tree. Oh man! But yeah. it is a nice tree. Yeah. We used to have that property because it's a church, um, and my dad was a pastor. Uh, that's a whole other thing. But uh, you're an actor. No, I'm, I'm an actor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you don't want to talk about like, acting. I'm just going to keep bringing that. No, no, no. up. <laughs> no, I, I want to talk about that. So we're good to talk about acting now. Absolutely. Okay. So acting. Yeah. How did, how did I get into that? Is that? I mean, uh, what is acting? What is acting? That, let, let's start with the, with the philosophical questions. What is acting? I mean, I wouldn't say pretending to be somebody else for a while, but embodying a character to tell a story. Okay, is it a story that? Is it specific stories? Is it stories that you resonate with? Is it stories that you've created, or is it stories that will pay you? The or reason why I, the reason why I want to be an actor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, it's just like about the captivation. I've always said that, like, there are loads, but there's just like these scenes that are crafted so beautifully that when you're watching it as an audience member, that you're just like, God. Like, you're just like there, taken with it the whole time. And I just have always just wanted to be part of that process. Just like being in that moment where you're giving that person that captivated feeling, mm. where it's just like, this is so good. I'm yeah. so absorbed in this moment. And I always like, it's funny, like the, the two that I usually talk about, the like, where I feel extremely captivated are actually like really violent scenes. But it's not about the violence in the scene, it's about what's making the person do that. And it's the elevator scene in Drive. And then, um, that scene's cool. So cool. <laughs> so cool. And, and then, then he, like he kisses her first, yeah. he makes out with her, and then he sure it's it's the whole the like dude. well it's the whole like <laughs> it's black and white that's exactly what it is, but it's that whole scene is like the lighting, the tone in the background, the complete like dehumanization of his character in that moment. He like knows that he's giving that up in her eyes, but he has to do this to protect her. Blah blah blah. <laughs> there's that one. See, like there's so much. Oh yeah, yeah. But then there's also another scene that I always point to is Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri when Ooh, I forgot about that movie. Yeah. When Good like movie. spoiler alert. When um the police captain Woody Harrelson's character kills himself and then Sam Rockwell's character responds to that the next day by beating the snot out of some reporter who had like said something about him in the paper. But like the soundtrack that plays over that and then Sam Rockwell's character is just like this terrible douchey like sort of somewhat redneck guy who like is just like trying to alpha on everybody when really he's just like a small man so he doesn't know how to respond to his grief mm. so then he just texts out violently and it's like awful but it's beautiful because it's just like you don't like that character but you understand his primal reaction because he just 
yeah. is bad in every other aspect. Okay, what about uh, Manchester, Manchester by the Sea? I haven't seen it yet. I always, oh, yeah, shit. I always, oh, man. I just, I haven't sat down oh. to do it. It's, but I've seen, it's hard, I've seen a bunch it's, of clips. It's hard to watch. Right. But it's, it's, it's good. Because I've, yeah, I've heard, I mean, I, I've seen I a bunch of clips. I was going to bring a scene up from that, but, but if, yeah. Well, it's probably the scene where he's talking about what happened and then he grabs the gun from the police officer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I've seen that scene. I've, like, ruined it for myself a few times, but... Yeah, that's just, like, a very real... I haven't seen the whole thing, obviously, like, critique, if I could be that, to Casey Affleck's performance, but it just apparently was just a really perfect embodiment of what grief would be in that moment, where you're just like, yeah, gotta kill myself, but it's like, no. Sucked. Yeah. Okay, what about... (laughs) We were just gonna go through the list. uh, What's the other one? I like this scene. Blue Valentine. Oh, man. (laughs) Blue Valentine with uh, never saw it. You, you never saw it. Did you, you see Blue Valentine? Oh yeah. Okay, Ryan. So like Ryan Gosling yeah, on the so bridge. He's like yeah. So one the the song in that that he like plays for yeah. her puts on like a, on my wife. Uke? Yeah. So like it's called You and Me by Penny and the Quarters. My wife and I. That was our first dance. Oh, that's but we cool. like but like our first experience of that song was in Blue Valentine. <laughs> so it was like, should we use this song? Because that movie is so depressing yeah. and so mm. awful. Great movie, but like you feel awful afterwards because you're just like depressed. But the yeah. song was so beautiful. We were, so we were like, can we dance to this? <laughs> How does it go? Is it, I'm trying to remember the words. You and me, you and me, nobody, baby, but you and me. You know? Yeah, mm, that one, yeah. yeah I love so that it's really, it's like a classic. And he's standing really in the bri- under the the arch with the ukulele. Oh, that's like, so, so no, that's a different song. Yeah, it's a different song. But okay, which one's yeah. that one? Uh, you always hurt the ones you love. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. not a great one to dance to. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. I mean, true. You Very true. The ones you love. Yeah. Na, 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 and I know that they like na, 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 he and Michelle Williams like lived together for a while to prepare for that. Like they oh. lived like. As a couple, hmm. to like method so they act were for a it. couple, yeah, <laughs> and then they wrote a. F- they have because I mean they were it was cast. destructive, yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> and then they just validated that it was the film and sure. moved on, like yeah, <laughs> like what so, is the film and what is not the film, you know, like right. like who told them you got to do this and yeah, I don't know, yeah. that's a whole other. So yeah, I mean that I guess back to the question that's just those feelings of captivation that you get was the motivation, but I had like always wanted to do it but just in Northern Ireland never really knew how to get started nor was I really being supported in doing that I would like always do those silly like career generator things and it would always like pop up like actor nice. filmmaker really? director always mm. yeah, yeah but then the people in my careers department would be like no you're doing these subjects I think you should more gravitate towards like accounting like a lawyer stuff like that like because I was at like a grammar school and they're just trying to breed people in like normal jobs that will pay well but, yeah so i was kind of discouraged from doing it so i just didn't but we would do my like english teacher when i was like 14 or 15 was essentially a drama teacher so we would go into his class and rather than like reading books or doing literature he would present us with scenarios and say here's a scenario go and like we wouldn't write anything down we would just like craft an improv in about 10 minutes and then present it to the class like groups of four or five or even less than that sometimes and just do like a mini skit and I would like always like no I wouldn't always lead it but I always I just loved it and I just loved to be involved in like the yeah. crafting of that and that was where it was kind of born I didn't miss I didn't really do like any I didn't do any theater acting in my school but I was my a friend of mine we like stage managed one of the theater productions which was really fun but then when I moved here and then waiting for my green card, not being al- allowed to work until I got my green card. Um, as soon as I did, I like, my wife saw a posting for like a background casting. So then just, I went and did it, loved it. And I was like, this is what I should have been doing the whole time. Yeah. I have a journalism degree that I'm just. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, what I've learned is like all of your experience uh, contributes <clears throat> to the work you do as an actor. Sure. So like your journalism degree, your, yeah. uh, you're having kids or all of these mm-hmm. things experience to how you work as an actor, interpret as an actor. Too. Sure. So like, like I was, I remember I was like, I just want to act. I just want to do that mm-hmm. when I was younger. And like, um, 
my friend's like, why don't you just like go to college and act too? And I'm like, no, that's not, uh, you know, yeah. I don't, I want to be an actor. And it's like, I didn't get it that like, like who you are, like a, a film hires you because of who you are, not because of who you can be. Mm. At least from my experience, from what I've seen, it's like, yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I didn't know if, I don't know if you went to college for film. Did you? What did I go to college for? I started going for music, then I started going for business, then I started going for production, then I took some, took some acting classes, then I just I ended up going for a liberal arts degree, and then I sure. ended up leaving. Yeah, because I just. Do you know how close you are to actually wrapping that up? If you decided, I think to ever I have wrap like yeah, I think it would be like a semester or well, like, a, like a there. hard semester. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, had, you have no interest in but just like yeah at this punch. point it's no, just kind of like I tried like, to yeah. go back and then yeah. I was like I was like I hate these people talking about what to do <laughs> yeah he's like you have to put this assignment and by this time I'm like fuck who says <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah school's a bummer man yeah but yeah. it's I think the beautiful thing about school is you show that you can start something and finish something exactly that's why I finished I with my associate's do degree with school <laughs> but I feel like you know? in my experience the people who I've worked with who have like gone through film school Obviously, like, if it's crew members, they learn all of, like, the stuff that they would learn on set, but also it's good to have a foundation, I guess. But it's also just, like, big-time networking. Yeah. Seems like those people who are in that world in school are just like, oh, I really love this person. I really love the way they work. Let's, like, work together. And then they end up, like, I mean, like, a director who I worked with, um, who's now in L.A., like, he was well-connected beforehand, but... He moved out there and like did some work with a guy who he had done film work with here, like connections through school. And it's just like all of these guys are in crew and yeah. mostly are like aspiring directors, but will like do most camera work until they actually like sit down and write, get their own stuff together, and then actually are able to direct. But I I love seeing that, just people being able to get connected that way. That is true. I think that that's the uh, that's the foundational, fundamental like benefit of school in my mind at least film school because like when i was 15 or 14 or something i started working on different stuff so i go i was lucky like i just fell into it like Mm. my my friends were doing it and uh they wanted to they wanted me to act in things they wanted me to help with stuff so i just from that age i was already like learning production stuff you know i was pushing carts for like commercials when i was like 16 yeah so uh, and then i was editing commercial stuff when i was like 18 or 19 so like Mm. Like, uh, I was lucky to uh, do that, but I guess, like, that's typically what you would find in film school. Yeah. It's like, you fall and you're like, oh, all these people like what I'm doing. Sweet, yeah. Um, another thing, dude, is, like, acting classes was huge. Yeah. Like, doing that, I met some of my best dudes, you know, some yeah. of my best friends, like Austin, Dennis, and uh, just really cool people, Laura Cunningham, and um, I met these amazing people that sure. are still a part of my life because yeah. they're interested in the same stuff. Right. Um, yeah I, for me it's just like I love people and I'm like I'm an extra I want to be around people but I hate networking yeah. I hate forced yeah. interactions with like an ulterior motive of like working with this person I just yeah. I think that's just I don't do I that just, bro uh, now no, I'm, yeah. that, I'm just like I'm just like a dick to somebody if I don't I'm not like I'm not a dick to him but like if somebody if I know I don't get along with somebody sure like I'm not gonna try to you pretend. just shut right. it off yeah I'm just like or like like but what's cool is sometimes like those friendships all of a sudden are great because like for instance Nolan this guy that I'm, I was working on this feature with he was mm-hmm. an operator like he was really hard on the other people yeah. in the department and I'm not yeah. actually technically in his department but um, he thought I was and so he was really hard on all of us and I one day I just had to like be very clear with him like hey I don't give a shit <laughs> sure yeah. what you have to say I never asked for your opinion I never asked for your feedback mm-hmm. um, and it was really good because yeah. we like both just understood each other right and now he's cool and we get along but it took that you know right um, anyways I don't know why I'm bringing that up uh, I feel like sets yeah. are very like fickle places as well. Where like, yeah. Even though people are comfortable working together, if you're on set for like twelve hours, or even shorter than that, 
if you're like on set for a few weeks and you're even there for like two hours and that one day you're just like for freak's sake yeah what's or it if like if you're on a on? film for three weeks or a month with the same people every day for yeah. 15 hours 16 hours yeah can i be pissed off and still get along with this person can i be exhausted and still get along with this person they're essentially like a roommate for three weeks yeah <laughs> I can Seriously. say that because I've had my parents with me for three weeks. There we go. <laughs> Love my parents, but maybe not necessarily in my space. How much longer are they here? Friday. Are you like? Uh, would they? Is there any way they would listen to this? I podcast? mean, if they if they do, like, I mean, they're <laughs> checking into a hotel on Tuesday to see out the rest of their time here in a hotel, and I'm like, good for them. Yeah. Because, I mean, we have a three bedroom house. Yeah, it's crazy. Kids occupy two of those rooms. Oh my so. goodness! Yeah, that's a that's a full house. It's tight. Yeah, so how would you tight. pull that off? They're on the couch. We're on the couch. I'm, I'm uh, yeah. I like they they did the first night that they stayed in our house because um, the kids just haven't been feeling well, so it's just been a kind of catastrophe, if you will. Um, but they spent the first night on a mattress in our living room, whereas the initial plan that I had said from the outset and. We, everyone had agreed is that they would just sleep in our bedroom and like my wife would ride the couch and I would find somewhere to sleep because I sleep like a log anywhere um, and then our older daughter has been waking up once, twice a night every night for the past few months and I can run on a few hours of sleep whereas my wife like needs mm. 8 to 10 hours so Dang, 8 to 10 hours She's a yeah. sleeper. She's Emily and I are the opposite. I need I need that eight to ten hours. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm like if there's a good four, I'm good. That's crazy. Man, I if, if I get eight like hours that. of sleep, I wake up and I'm like, go oh, like sluggish. So, really yeah. interesting. I don't I don't recall, like I when I get tired, like I'll be tired. But then if I that's got to be some sort of like biological variability difference thing because I know some people that sleep is just kind of like. You know, they'll get like, you remember when Casey Neistat was doing those daily vlogs and he was like going over his schedule. He, he said he would only sleep for like four, maybe like three or four hours a day. And then he would just get up, start editing and then do that. Like, and he did that for how many years? Like, or like maybe like a year. I feel like I would struggle anyway. if I was like sitting in front of a screen, presumably the way he probably was for six, at least hours per day. Dude, the last three weeks I was sitting in front of a screen for... 13, 12, 12 to 13 hours. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Couldn't work an office nasty. job. Could never work an office job. Would probably have fun, but. Yeah. No, well, I was in the sick. back. I was in like a, in a trailer sitting there. So it was weird. It was like an office on wheels. Yeah. <laughs> so. Are you glad to be done? Yeah. Yeah. Are you done? With, you said you're done with production. We're done with production. Now I have to edit it. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if anybody wanted to see anything that you've acted in, could they? Um, I don't know how much has been... I've just mainly done like a lot of short stuff, and I don't really know where you can find a lot of it. I do have one that were, like I was in the lead in that I'm like really proud of, um, but the director didn't want to like... It like did like the festival circuit and stuff like that, but the director didn't want to... like release it on like youtube or just put it somewhere because he felt like that would have like cheapened it um classic yeah so where is it he just has it's it it's on a hard drive and uh, it's i mean i have like a private link Ooh. that i can like show you guys but i'm not gonna like so the director, i'm not gonna publish that without like i would i've only shown like close friends and family that's and cool. then obviously people who and the festivals that it went to have seen it and then that would help uh you get more work if it was public. <laughs> yeah. But, so. yeah. I would, yeah. I would love for it to be, but <laughs> not my say. And that's fine. It's not, I mean, I was in it, but it's not mm. my product, so. Yeah. And then, yeah. I mean, doing short films and stuff like that is just kind of, you just have to track down your footage where you can find it. I mean, yeah. which is really, like, the kind of sad realities of actors who are, I wouldn't say I'm starting out anymore, but I still have, like, things that I've done that I haven't got footage for where I'm like, gosh, that would be great to, like, diversify, like, the footage that I have. Yeah. Because it's just, like, a different genre of movie. And and then there's just this, like, 
weird social aspect of like I don't want to be too pushy to get this stuff and seem like a dick but at the same time like I was in that so you're a dick for not giving it to me like that yeah. whole silly mm. thing but Dude, can you just a... rip it like off YouTube or something if it was there oh right gotcha yeah yeah but I mean I'm on IMDb so you can see some of my stuff there. Um, so you're legit I've, I've seen your acting reel yeah, yeah. yeah. your demo that's, reel that's essentially what you'll see but it's hard to actually track down any full length things which is sad but are you represented yeah yeah with somebody Cor- with Mitchell and Associates talent Mitchell. cool yeah sweet what Can does that re- mean having mm-hmm. an agent oh, okay yeah it means that she means two things in my mind one is that she's looking through casting stuff and then she has a list of actors and then when she thinks that this person fits well she'll submit them and then the other one is when films come to new mexico they'll reach out to a casting director who will have relationships with agents and then will contact them to submit their talent to that said show hey give us all your tall caucasian guys yes yeah okay (laughs) You'll find me. There it is. <laughs> but he's got, can you yeah. do an American accent? I uh, yeah, I've I've only ever auditioned with my accent twice out of like Really? Uh, yeah, loads. And then So you could have done this whole podcast with an American accent. Could have, sure. Dang. Would I've if I have listened to it back, would I have been like, man, I sounded like an idiot. <laughs> Cause I like I, I mean every every project I've been in has been sh- like with an American accent, which is fine, but I'll just like hear myself and just be hyper like hypercritical, which is like the nature of anything that you but it's do. It's also but perfect to learn, like and grow. Yeah. So and then I auditioned. I've auditioned. Every audition has been American, bar like four, two of which have been my accent authentically, and then two of which have been Australian. Oh, wow. Australian. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Good eye. No. <laughs> no. Good eye. Good eye. Danny the Dundee. Yeah. Um, do you always have you like auditioned other accents or are you just always. Yeah, I had to do like a Spanish accent for a while for like quite a few things. and then Like Spanish speaking or just like. like yeah, like the. English, Spanish. From, yeah. Yeah, like uh, what was it? Like old Spanish or like Western things. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, what but else? Never, never anywhere like out of I don't North lo- America, I, don't I guess. I look like. I don't I don't look like I could speak another like I don't I don't <laughs> Yeah, you look like you have an like with your look it could be like a Hispanic or Mexican yeah. accent. I'm not gonna pull off an Irish Spanish. you know, like they're not gonna be like, Oh that guy's that guy looks Irish. Like yeah. you'd be like, Why is he talking like that? Yeah. You know? Because I don't look like it. So like mm. um Yeah. I'm trying to think I've done other ones though. It's fun. I mean I I I like to do things other than American because, mm. and then back when like we were actually able to do like in-person auditions, yeah, I would. I mean, I would go in, sometimes lead either with my accent or else just like ask the question to the casting director beforehand. Be like, I've like, kind of rehearsed this both accents. Just what's your preference? Yeah, and they would ninety-five percent of the time say American. Really? Oh yeah. But then there was one time when I was in a room, and like you have like your acting resume, if you will, and I like list some of the accents I can do, and then like one of them was South African, and they were like, "Can you actually do that?" And I was like, "Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it on there unless I could." And they're like, "African, South African, South, really? South African." Can I hear it? Um, <laughs> no, yeah. There was a guy um, in the other day, and he was speaking. And I couldn't quite tell whether he was Australian or South African at the time because he hadn't really said much. And then he said the word one, like that. And I was like, oh, you're South African. He's like, well, how did you know that? Mm-hmm. I was like, well, it's because you said the word one, but it was like, one. One. And then I've like, I watched a lot of like rugby growing up and it was like Southern Hemisphere. So it's commentators from New Zealand, Australia, South Africa. So I kind of like absorbed that. And then I knew a guy in London he was South African, this guy called Francois Poe. And he was like, oh, he played he played hockey, but field hockey. So his accent was a little bit different to that of what you would hear when the rugby players are playing. Wow. Mm. So, so Elon Musk is South African. You only hear it sometimes, because I think he's, 
He's is he an American citizen or he's lived in the U.S. for like a really long time? He's lived in the U.S. since he's tell. like twelve or sure. something. Yeah. I feel like if I've ever seen interviews of him, like I vaguely hear it. Yeah, it's and like, like but people say the same thing about me. Yeah. Like if I'm chatting, they're like, "Oh, I'd, like I didn't like pick I'd, up you had an accent when I first when you first came in." Just, and then I was yeah. like, oh. "Yeah, it took a few minutes for you to realize <laughs> yeah. that." That's kind of typical. People be like, "Oh, I, w- I wouldn't have thought you were Irish." It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't have an accent. It's like just because it's not your typical Irish accent, like I was saying before, it just kind of flies over people's heads. And that's all right. So but then people love to tell me that they are are Irish as well. That's like one of the Amer- like in my experience, that's just like Americans' favorite thing. Well, the, I'm Irish too. Like their lineage is Irish, yeah. uh, but they're not actually yeah. from Ireland. <laughs> yeah. Like they have like a great uncle, like a like sure, and then great uncle that was a little yeah. bit Irish. And then it doesn't happen all the time, but then people just assume that Ireland is like tiny. So they'll be like, oh, do you know, like, <laughs> do you know the McCormicks? I'm like, I, yeah, might, I might know get, someone who's a McCormick, but them. that's not necessarily your McCormick. I have no idea. Huh. So do you think there's like an ignorance with Americans? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody's ignorant in some aspect if you want to be like that, but. Um, like in what way? Like, um, I feel like there's like a American pride, kind of, kind mm-hmm. of a. A thing, uh, but also so like, um, uh, one of my ex girlfriends, she was from China, and so mm. she she had a big value for America because the intellectual uh, pr- intellectual freedom that America like we protect in intellectual property here, versus in China they don't. Okay. But but she also was like Chinese people make fun of Americans just because they're. Like less sophisticated, you know what I mean? Like there was like a kind of yeah. an idea about America um, from her world. Um, you asking me what my idea about yeah, America is from my world? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like we would go on like holidays in Spain and like go to resorts growing up, and then there was always just like this eye roll moment if there was an American around, <laughs> because you'd be like sitting by the pool, and then there was just this assumption that Americans are just like really loud and just like big, like personalities sort of stuff and as you're trying to like sit and relax by the pool these americans are over here just making so much noise I'm like no people will get yeah just that and it was just i mean there's this i feel like it's probably obesity true. is everywhere but there's <laughs> also like this assumption that like all americans are fat that i like that was put to me growing up but mm. it's not my experience um i mean we are one of the most obese countries sure, sure. Like health wise, yeah. Um, but yeah, like that was just like the thing. Just like <laughs> to be like <laughs> to Frank, it was just like loud and fat. People just thought Americans <laughs> were like like that. Yeah, which is really mean. And from but. Texas, sure. We're from Texas. Yeah, so with a what. gun yeah. strapped around their yeah. waist. Yeah. <clears throat> but your experience now that you're here is. Just people are people. Yeah. That's, that's my main thing. I mean, when I moved to America, it was like, I mean, living in like Western society, like you're kind of exposed to like the commercial side of everything. But I remember the first time like I drove down Coors and there was just like fast food on every side. And it's just like in your face everywhere. It was yeah. just like, wow. I feel like it's much more subtle, at least mm-hmm. in my experience growing up in like a smaller town in Northern Ireland. You just wouldn't. I mean, there are fast food places, but it's not as though they're, like, screaming at you to come and buy their stuff. It's mm-hmm. just there. Whereas, yeah, like, oh, there's I feel so like many go options in America. If, yeah? Or, like, uh, Durango. You went to Durango. Oh, yeah. Um, but there's, like, spots that are just, like, still unscathed by the American, like, capitalism, you yeah. know? Like, they're, yeah. like, not polluted by just money um, or the desire for money. And if they are, it's not, like, the main strip. Like, if you drive down Durango's strip, same thing with, like, Telluride. They have, like, that main street where, like, mm-hmm. it's just a lot of local stuff, which is really cool. Yeah. You'd have to go outside, like, I don't know, a mile or two to find, like, a McDonald's or something like that. Which is great. Yeah. You know what sucks, though? In, in Albuquerque, the we built this stupid... Sorry, it is stupid, everybody. We built this stupid bus thing that runs all the way down oh, Central. Oh, it, sure. And it shut down all the businesses for a while while they were building it and most businesses that won't survive are small local businesses yeah I uh, remember. the larger chains yeah the larger chains are going to be just fine 
because they have outsourced outside you know mm-hmm. um, they're bigger so um yeah that was disappointing there's electric buses Oh, yeah, diesel. The, yeah. <laughs> that was the not plan. even it's electric. Like, yeah. They were going to try to be electric, but then they just could not. Like, the technology was just not there. But it's in every, it's everywhere else. I think it's just the, the brain power. <laughs> like, like, I'm sorry, but, like, I don't know why I feel like New Mexico is not being well managed. But, like, homelessness is rising and these... and drug addiction and these things are just not being taken care of and i think it's from like a policy level and and it's not just from a community level it's not just from like oh hanging out with you you know like down like we need to build more community things it's like no like i don't know well we have the least like this is objectively one of the poorest states in the entire u.s yeah but we had in grt since we started doing the gross receipts tax i was talking to one of the people in the city kathy and she was saying like we had it was so much money in excess just from GRT because everyone started paying taxes on gross 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 taxes uh-huh. so anything you made you were paying taxes on from a business every business was doing that and that money went into a big pot and then they decided what to do with it and so they decided to potentially fix the freaking stadium and it's like no don't fix the stadium yeah fix the compassion center or the the thing to stop the you know, whatever. So, um, well, college yeah. tuition is free now for New Mexicans. But wasn't it free That's before? Something. Like there the was lottery. the lottery scholarship, which made it. But now is it just like free for everybody? Now it is all encompassing, catch all. It's free college education for anybody. Mm-hmm. I think as long as you're boosted. Yeah. Or which, you get an exemption. Which I'm not, so I don't qualify. Uh, which I was actually like. I want to, I was like, I'm going to take advantage of that. I want to take some Spanish classes. And it's like, I think the terms are you have to be working towards a degree, which I could just say I'm working towards a degree or, you know. You can get a health. uh, uh, I'm wondering if that'll fall off, though, in like a year or two. Do you think it would? I hope so. I hope so, too, because I'm at this point, I don't want to get boosted. I'm fine. Yeah. Um, I've never, I think been, double, I've never been vaccinated. So. You're non-vaxxed. I'm double Moderna vaxxed. Plus, I got COVID, so I feel like I'm good. Um, yeah, I had COVID already, too. Ryan, what's your vaccination <laughs> status? <laughs> we should have asked this before you got here. <laughs> definitely vaccinated. Heck yeah, dude. Had to go. I mean, I, I mean, definitely vaccinated, but also definitely had to be vaccinated in order to go back to Ireland. Oh, in right. Yeah. So whether I wanted to or not, I... Yeah. Did it anyway. Yeah. So. And you don't have any limbs growing off of like extra limbs or anything like no. that? That's never, cool. never got COVID. Never happened. Oh, really? Never. Wow. Don't know how. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, I mean. Who knows? Maybe I did. You could have. got a light yeah. form of that. But if I ever felt sick, I tested and never, never had it. So. Yeah. Yeah. But allegedly, I never had it. So. <laughs> yeah. But. What a good, fun time that whole two year season was. How do you feel about no in-person auditions currently? Oh, it's fine. I mean, it gives me more. You don't freedom. mind? Oh, yeah, I feel the complete. Like in-person way. auditions are cool, mm. you know, because I can actually meet the like Kira and, and Mid Thunder and all them. But um, well, that's the thing as well. It's like probably like I I've auditioned enough for like the local casting directors that it's like it's fun to have the report. Yeah, and I'd prefer to go and see them and be like, "Hey, I know, yeah, just send them an email." <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, you know, I don't know. Like when I saw Kira last time, it was cool. I like hugged her and stuff, but I don't even know what she's doing now. I haven't seen her uh, cast much lately. No, yeah, no, have I. But um, yeah, I, I like the I like the the uh, virtual ones just because I uh, I can I'm usually really busy with a million different things so i can do it i can fit it into my schedule rather than having to wait for you know sure here come to this place at this time and if you're late you know you blah 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 see like that that's that aspect works like way better for me where it's like you need to be here at this time Mm -hmm. presumably for like 20 minutes max whereas now it's like here's a self-tip it's due on like x date and i'm like okay so you're gonna wait till the last minute not try to, but like typically it's like, okay, I've got my two kids. Yeah. I've got my job. How am I going to like mold this into it? Because like 
90 percent of the time i'll end up doing like my audition with my wife and she's usually so exhausted that she's just like okay let's do this mm. whereas like i mean i have i've done it with a few other people who are more enthusiastic um but have you ever like done it with like uh kira and she's just like one of her readers is just like you walked into the bar you dev it like she's just so monotone like, sure like, sure i've read with people and like casting directors will often give it to you just completely flat because mm-hmm. they've read it 50 times that right. day too so who's I, Ki- who's kira kira, kira Ray. Ari, Ari, yeah whatever Ray, yeah. she's okay. a casting director in time she's super so sweet she's so. friends with britney uh britney uh moreno they like oh, been okay. friends for a long time but she she casts like all better call saul and all that stuff yeah and, no, so for me, it's like, I have the self-tape, that's great, but I'll do it as many takes as obviously I want to, because it's... Yeah. And that's like... I Dude, I just do one, and then I'm done. So, yeah. <laughs> I like, just stopped caring. Like, I'm just done caring. Well, I get that, but it's also like, I don't like having the option to, like, do it a million different ways, and then narrow it down to one or maybe two yeah. takes, and then do it. I'd rather go in do it and then if they want to give me direction for another take i'll show them i can take direction and then do it again Uh, or else if i'd like do that take it's just cold i'd rather because it's it sounds as though you can just do it cold and send it whereas like i can do it cold but it's more like i've just i've just done like i used to get so nervous like so nervous and so now i'm just like when i'm on set and i'm acting i'm just doing it like once or like a few times or whatever you know back and forth but i'm doing it one way right and I might as well give it to them the way it's going to be on set. Yeah. Like, you know, like if they want me, then they want me. If they don't, then they don't. So, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I just don't really stress about it anymore. And I just don't like, it. just, I used to hinge my whole life and my happiness and stuff on getting the role or, you know, Oh, I had six callbacks this week. I used to like hinge on my happiness on that. And it just was like exhausting because I'm hinging it on something I have no control over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I just got done with that, dude. And then I've had agents in L.A. and managers in L.A. And it's cool, actually, having an a-, a manager because they can call. Uh, you could do this, too, but uh, New Mexico doesn't really want you to do this. But sure. they typically would call the uh, casting director up. So you submit one. They'll call up and say, hey, like, do you want them to do something different? And they'll be talking and negotiating with the casting director, yeah. with the, with the uh, agent as well. To, to give you more opportunities because there's right. countless times on projects where my manager would be like hey they just want you to change it try to do it like this or try to you know um, which is kind of cool because um, it's not just like a jumping like throwing it out and then you never know you know yeah. it's like a feedback thing um, yeah so I don't know um, if you had advice for actors that were wanting to start what would you what would you say just take the plunge People are so like, ah, oh, I just don't know if I'll be good at it, blah, blah, blah. It's like... What does taking the plunge look like? Just, if you... I mean, for me, it was just like, I saw, like, a background casting thing. And background's fun for what it is when you're, like, doing it. Um, but if people ever have a question as to whether they actually want to pursue it, you just have to do it. Yeah. Try to get yourself in the mix. Some people are like, oh, I get scared on camera, I... I don't know if I'll be good enough. And it's like, it's the same with any situation. It's like, you just never know until you do it. And then once you do it, you'll be able to decide whether you love it or not. And if you love it, great. There you go. Yeah. Pursue. And if you don't love it, well, there you go. Something I'm, else. I'm good. <laughs> you know, I'm all right. Yeah. Except you're, for these, you're pursuing what yeah, you want to do. These cameras are okay. But um, I've never been on a set. I've never been on a film. I've like been behind the camera on a couple of things, but... Um, I don't really have any sort of interest in improv or acting of any kind or taking acting classes or Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm just like, no, I think I just like, I'm not a good pretender. I'm not, I, I could be a good actor. I've never tried, but I just, if you were, if Brando was here, he he would be like, you're acting right now. I was like, who this old actor, Marlon Brando, his whole thing was like, everybody's acting at like, every point yeah there. every point you're acting a certain way to appeal like all That's the cameras true, yeah. on us right now to, dude once these cameras yeah. come off <laughs> 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 but that's his whole argument is like he was talking to like letterman or something and he said like uh the guys like said the same thing i could never do what you're doing and he's like you do this every night 
you come up here and act like you're in a good mood. You come here up here right. and act like you're interested in what I'm yeah. saying. You come up here and act like all this stuff. That's harder than doing it once a year like I do. And he's like, so you act way better than I do, you know, um, which I think is kind of true. Uh, I just think for me, it would have to be it would have to be something that I'm so interested in. And it would have to be something that I just totally resonate with, like the story or the, the actor I would be playing. And I feel like to get to that point would take way too long for me to like grind and do stuff I don't want to do that. Yeah. I'm just like, eh. What if someone okay. came to you and said, hey, here's a movie idea by this guy who has a child and a wife <laughs> and wants them in a coffee shop? I would give it a shot. I'm not, I, don't, I think I would, I would give it a shot, yeah. You would act in the way that you want that to turn out? The coffee shop? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would be a thriving Maybe you'd business. you'd be pretty good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I could give it a shot. I'm not opposed to it. If there's any directors out there, I'm available, but. <laughs> just for specific, that specific role. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. But the coffee yeah. shop is coming close, right? You guys? I mean, yeah. close is, what does that even <laughs> On mean? On the brink of breakout. You were saying something about that coffee earlier this when the coffee? cameras were off. Starbucks coffee? Uh, yeah, it's in a it's in a prop mug. But oh, yeah, prop mug. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actors. Yeah. The stamina <laughs> coffee, good. This is my second. But this is a different batch, right? The one you gave me before. So this one is a blend, which I am realizing is just catch all for it's anything it doesn't matter what sure. it is because we're just going to call it a blend and it could be different every single time right but it's just easier to call it a blend rather than try to get a specific ratio and type of bean every single time so it's a blend of guatemala mm. and i believe papua new guinea no way yeah papua new guinea yeah Dang. No, it's really good like it a lot thanks the what previous flavors roast, are you tasting the, the previous roast that christian gave me was brazilian brazilian so far as i recall Still have a little bit of a left. It's nice. It's good yeah. stuff. Are you are you picking up any specific flavors? Are you that kind of it's coffee cold, guy? So it's cold. It's yeah. cold. <laughs> At this point, it's hard to tell. I wasn't really thinking about it when I was drinking so it. Cold flavor. Cold yeah. flavor. Cold flavored yeah. coffee. I like that flavor. Too absorbed in this conversation to think about the coffee notes that I'm getting. <laughs> I need to be in that space. Are you a notes kind of guy though, or no? No, man. Like, so I told you earlier that Mondays are just my days where I just drink way too much coffee because I'll wake. I know I'm gonna go to Castle Coffee, not to not push the stamina. No, coffee no, no. We, we, we love, love we stamina. Love. We love Josh and Matt. They're gonna come they on have the a podcast. podcast in a way, right? Yes, they I, do. I know that they have a podcast. They started after us, though. Yeah, we did start first. I reached out <laughs> to them. The ball's in their court. We reached out to them and said, "Cancel your podcast, or we will cancel it for <laughs> no. you." No. Yeah. I just no, want to have a conversation with them. But I, also, yeah. I, I totally 100% understand that we're all busy. And sure. to make time to, like, yeah. for four people that have their own lives and shit and going kids. on. Yeah, yeah. like, it, like that's tough to do. So Yeah, I actually saw Matt today for the first time in weeks. It was nice. Yeah. He was there today. But they, I just, like, accept that I'm going to drink way too much coffee on Mondays. Because usually, yeah. like, I'll go, I'll get a drink, I'll get a coffee to go as well. Dang. Presumably, I'll have coffee in the morning, not even thinking about it. Not because yeah. I'm addicted to coffee. <laughs> yeah, right. But just because, like, I wake up and I just no. That's the first thing I do. I wake up, roll out of bed, take a poop, and then go start the kettle. You know, Dang. sure. Yeah. Mine's in the opposite order. You start the kettle first. No, he poops second. Yeah, I poop second. He has okay. the coffee first, and, then yeah. poops. I'm a I'm a poop right first thing in the morning you're right you got to clear the system you know what i've been doing drinking mm. a big old glass of water and i'm because i'm trying to quit coffee and actually you put this in front of me and i haven't had a sip yet. really yeah i forgot and that water looks pretty empty right there yeah. would you say so do you think you're addicted to coffee to caffeine not to caffeine no i don't how many I mean, cups of coffee do you have a day this is like your fourth right Today, this is like my fourth of this, but it's not like I'm drinking like four cups of coffee every day. Some days I'll wake up and I'll, I'll just not have a cup of coffee and not think twice. Oh. I'm not like, I don't have to have a cup of coffee in the morning. Mm. It's more just like a taste thing. I'm not like drinking it for the caffeine. Yeah. But like if I wake up and I smell coffee, I'll be like, it smells Oof. nice. Yeah. But it's not nice. like, it's not like a caffeine addiction. It's just like, wow, that I just know that tastes good. That's what, mm. that's what you tell yourself. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what I tell myself. I'm just like, oh, yeah. I just, I enjoy a cup in the morning. But like I... I don't feel energized by coffee. I mean, if coffee anything, doesn't I, give you energy. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I, I know that. But I, I don't feel as though like I need it to wake me up in the morning. Like people would usually say like, oh, I need my cup of coffee. It's part of my routine. I have to get up with this. It's just like, a, I mean, I 
could wake up, have breakfast with a glass of orange juice. Huh. This morning, I like rather than having a cup of coffee this morning with breakfast, kombucha. Nice. Wow. It was just there, so I was like, great. Mm. Glass of water. Glass of water. Yeah. I don't know, water. Water. Yeah. It's a glass of water. What? Uh, water. No water. No. Yeah, what? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we should probably wrap this up because I think this camera is about to Wait, die. I have a so, question. Yeah, I mean, let's start the, the process. Okay, the wrap up. You know. Okay. I'm not saying we have Let to. Let me think All of right, my bye question. Bye, everyone. Just quickly. Go ahead. Um, how do you feel like somebody... Okay, so as an actor, mm. to an actor, we have this dream, right? Sure. To like... Mine's to make a lot of money acting and telling good stories. Like, that's mine. Money uh, money's the focus? I love money. <laughs> okay dude you're going to hell um yeah no i'm not i don't know what hell is anyways <laughs> so we have this dream right and it's like started to like play as a kid like be like oh like that feeling of like play and um that freedom that happens when you're acting i'm sure, sure you felt that yeah that's like the core of it but like um uh money's cool mm. and like if, if you're going to work I think that work should be. This is not my question. This is a precursor yeah, to it. Yeah. But like, I like the idea of acting because it gives me an opportunity to have taking care of myself as a part of my job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like taking care of myself, making sure I'm healthy, making sure I'm uh, getting sleep, making sure I'm taking care of my mental uh, stuff is a part of my job, mm. um, and that's a really important thing I think. Uh, but my question is: is how do people from like the kind of the spot that we're in? Like I've I've booked. A decent amount of stuff, smaller stuff, like not any lead roles in right. features or anything like sure. that. Sure. Um, but smaller, like supporting roles and stuff. But how does it, somebody like us, move from that space to another space where it's like, oh, we're leading in features, you know, in your yeah. mind? I mean, I actually had a really good conversation with Jesse Eisenberg one time just about like what it is to make it as an actor. For me, like, I would love to obviously be part of that and like lead or whatever and give people that captivating experience but at the same time for me I would if I could get to a point where I'm just acting full time take care of me and my family that would be just like great that would be the dream just to be doing what I love as and making enough money that I like can be comfortable which doesn't need to be much honestly because I could care less about money couldn't care less sorry. um but when I talked to Jesse Eisenberg about it he was like honestly making it big is like winning the lottery yeah. He's like, you can know people, you can have all the networking in the world, you can be incredibly talented, but at the same time, to actually make it, you just have to be really lucky. Like, you can be talented, but if you don't have that luck, you might not ever make it to, like, A-list. I'd be happy with even being, like, Z-list. Like, <laughs> if it meant that I could just do it full-time. Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure. Well, you should get into commercial work, man. Yeah? Like, uh, my buddy. I mean, I've, I've shot a few. But my, so. my, my, my buddy Davey lives off of, he'll book two commercials a year and he lives from that. Yeah. And it's like, he probably makes 70, 80 a year doing I've, that. So I don't know if, I, if it's the same guy, but I've, I've met a guy who just has told me before that he's like, oh yeah, I just filmed like a couple of commercials. I just got back from filming a commercial, yeah. but it's like a national commercial, which is like, yeah. oh great. It's your step of the year. Yeah. He'll make At like least. 30 or 40 off of that. Yeah. And, and residuals. If it For a national. Airs. Oh yeah. 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 So like. That's one thing. If if it's if it's if it's less. I mean, if it's if that's the goal is just to, you know, like flow from progressive. Like she makes bank, dude. Sure, she yeah. makes mad money. Or well, like then, Jake from State Farm. Oh yeah, like that dude's I in the cheddar, bro. There's the what's that? There's like an AT and T that there's that girl from AT and T. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know what her name is, but I, I also like her a lot because she like I guess she got like a lot of attention on social media for like her body image and then and then she's like got that stature in those commercials where she was like all right people are commenting on my body a lot so anytime i'm going to film another like a commercial with you guys i'm going to be standing behind like a like a kind of like a kind of desk and i'm like good for you yeah like i'll be your front woman but i don't I don't need all of that online yeah. attention about my body because that's yeah. not what I'm doing this audition for. But I think or also, so I like, people that are, like, globally known should just stay off the internet. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're, like, their job is to be seen. Sure. So they are subjecting themselves as a product to right. people. So you're going to have to expect that. Well, I, I, and I and think just of like, ignore it and not go on the right. internet. 
I know? think of like Killian Murphy, who like I saw an interview with him where they were asking him about like not having a social media presence. He's like, nah, too old for that. Yeah. And like they're like, no, you're not. He's like, <laughs> it was <laughs> yeah. basically just saying like I'm not arsed, but he was just saying something to get out of the question, which I respected because I'm just like. I would love to not be in social media. Yeah, man. Not that I'm addicted to it, but I just don't see it as like, I'll just hop on, see a couple of funny videos and just hop right off. Yeah. I've been off of it and then I've been on it and then I deleted it. And then I, uh, Actually, when like I, listened, I listened to one of your podcasts and then I deleted my Instagram afterwards. And I was like, <laughs> yes. But after I did that, I was like, oh, yeah, I actually don't think I have an unhealthy relationship with Instagram. <laughs> so I brought it back yeah. and I was like, oh, yeah. Maybe I'd that actually... was the one with Riley. I think we talked about oh, that. Oh, yeah, right, so. right. Yeah. I don't know. But after I did time. it, I was like, why did I? I mean, I did that because it felt like it might have been a good thing to do, but also that's not an unhealthy thing in my life. So why did I do that? Dude, so, when I'm posting a lot, you could probably guess that I'm not in a very good place. I feel like I'm, you said that on one of the podcasts. Did I say that on the podcast? I thought I said Thanks that on the podcast. Thanks a lot, dude. Did, did I really say, say that, that on the podcast? Oh, I, yeah, I had no said idea. it to your face. Which is like, <laughs> he said wow. it to everyone's face. Yeah, that's true. Jeez, dude. Now everyone knows when I post a photo, I'm actually crying deeply <laughs> inside. <laughs> Hang I on. cried the last two days. Really? Yeah. Go for it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> you, you, have we talked about this for you, big crier? Uh, we yeah, we talked about on Madison's podcast. Yeah. Oh, I mean, me and you. I, I, I don't know. Um, I'm not. I'll I'll have a good cry maybe once a year, once every six months or so. Did you cry when I was born? Yeah, definitely. Shh. Yeah, Little that was baby, like dude. nothing. That like, was a, that was a yeah, big cry. Both when both my kids were born, I was like, man. Not a big cryer at all, but nothing, nothing could have stopped those tears from yeah. just like flowing. I was like, wow. Yeah. Dang. What was the That's emotion right that there. was? It, was it just like this kid's beautiful? Was it this kid is my kid? Was it like um, my wife just? It went wasn't like torture? one of those like. I mean, that was it. Was yeah. So it wasn't one of those like pride thing where it was like, I reproduced. <laughs> it, it was, but it was like, I don't know. I mean, you like. I'm not pregnant, obviously, but like I was with my wife along that journey, and then it just culminates in this moment where a child is forced out of her, and it's beautiful to witness on one hand because it's like I was like standing there in awe of my wife on both yeah. occasions, but at the same time, like I feel like when my first daughter was born, like I saw her and that was great, but like my f focus was just like solely on my wife. Whereas for her, her focus was solely on like exhaustion, but then also the baby that was in, in her arms. But like, I was just like, I remember I was like stroking her head, my wife's head and just so encapsulated in pride for her that she had done this. Mm -hmm. And that was just like overwhelming. Obviously yeah. happy that my child was born, but also just like, my gosh, yeah, what a, what a champion. You've reached just, like, like the top yeah. of the mountain and then you quickly realize you're like, and then you look up again and you're like, oh my God, this is an 18 year mountain that I'm about to go down. Sure. Like it, yeah, it's like this culmination of just like nine months of, or like 10 months of, you know, your wife doing like, it's just a, a, a exhaustion of so much like feelings and emotions so and hormones how, like, and like they go through so right, much. Right, it's all them. <laughs> and we're just like kind of they're hiking apart. the mountain. Right, right. And you're watching them. <laughs> But then we act like <laughs> we contributed so much. Yeah. I mean, we 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 did support our. Wives, I mean, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah you you're there. I mean, yeah, that's a big part of it. Yeah, you're there. You're, always, like, you're alongside them, and then again, it's then you think of those women who are in situations where they. Yeah, that's are, brutal. Like they don't have that support. Not that they can't handle it, but it's just like I don't feel. I feel so bad for them that the fact that they don't have someone to be alongside. They don't have a Ryan next to them. Unbelievable. Did you know that 70 to 80 percent of homeless people didn't have a father in their home and 70, 80 percent of people in prison didn't have a father figure in their home? The, the statistics are like huge for that. Wow. Yeah. Um, the correlation is just like ginormous. And that's it makes sense because like it, I was joking earlier, but obviously like the, the male figure in, in, in raising kids is so vital. Mm. Yeah, and I think once you once you're in it, you don't understand why. Well, you can understand why a weak man would leave and just abandon it all and just give up because it the thought is so desirable to go back to not having the responsibility of another life and the responsibility of 
taking care of your wife. But just to go back to like, whoa, I, if I were a person that didn't have integrity, I could just walk away from this all. And that's yeah. like, that's, it's a sad thought that, but you can like see how somebody who does not have a, a, like a solid foundation is not responsible. You know, maybe they didn't have a father. And so mm. they're just kind of repeating that, uh, that system is just like, it's the, the, the feeling can be there, but for me, if, like, I, I could not do that at least right. in my could, head right yeah, now. Could leave. I could not do that, but I could see how somebody well, I've, weaker than me. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, I wasn't overwhelmed when my first daughter was born, but I was like really overwhelmed when my second daughter was born. Yeah. Because just like I felt like there was no, it's just like, it's like a selfish thing, but it's also what people need is there was just like no time for me to do what I needed to do in order to feel like good. Like podcasts and stuff. Like podcasts and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> because it was just like with one child, like, there's enough time in the day to do whatever you need to. And like, you're only sticking to like one nap schedule, all that sort of stuff. But then with two, it just adds like another variable. And you're just like, I felt so stuck. Cause I was like, mm. I can't go do anything for me. Cause I'm just in this moment all the time. Yeah. And yeah. Then not, you... that I, not that I'm discouraging people from having more children, <laughs> but I'm like, I just like the step from one to two was just like way more than I thought it would I've be. I've heard it doubles in difficulty. That would, yeah, that I, makes I, sense. I, I felt that, and I like. Yeah. I'd never necessarily I mean, feel like two <laughs> versus one. <laughs> yeah, I never necessarily feel like a great father, but it's just like man, for the first couple of months of having two kids, I was like, this is way harder than I was ready for. Wow. Yeah. So, what do you do to kind of like balance that out now? Like, what have you learned or tools that you picked up? Just like, you just need to like know that you have time for yourself and like when you have family around as well, it's really helpful, obviously for like babysitters, but just also having, surrounding yourself with people who are going to like support you. I mean, I'm, I'm an extrovert. I don't need, like, I don't need to be around people all the time, but I'm definitely more extroverted than I'm an introverted. Um, just being able to chat and just being able to actually go do things and prioritizing that time for yourself, mm -hmm. making sure that you're just not like always in the house with your kids and your wife. Yeah. Because stir, going stir crazy is <clears throat> Mm. Dang. There yeah. You go. Good stuff. Anything else you want to throw in, throw out there? No, I'm, in. I'm chilling. Chilling. Have you enjoyed this time? Yeah. Where are your kids right now? How come you're not being a responsible <laughs> father? <laughs> My parents are in time. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's cool. The parents like love to see their grandkids a bit. Yeah, and there's like the. I mean. My wife's parents live in town. My parents live back in Ireland, so there's not that desperation to be with them, but there's definitely like that present minded mindedness when they're here. Mm. So, mm. dang. But FaceTime's a great thing because my kids know my know my parents. Yeah, just by seeing them on, when they see them on the like, rectangle. Grandma and Grandpa. Oh, it's like, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> dang, I don't have kids. And I can't sure maintain a, a relationship, so dude. <laughs> so go go, you guys. I mean, what do That's you want? That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I was talking to my therapist the other day. That was fun. She was asking me, "What do I want from a relationship?" What'd so, you say? The secret. Come on, tell me. Do you want a relationship? <clears throat> tell uh, when is I say the, tell me, it, I mean the tell human everybody. <laughs> is it the human condition to create a relationship? Dude, I just like. Uh -huh. uh, uh, what do I want? I think I, you guys I think were trying I, to wrap this up and I keep asking questions. <laughs> it's all right. Well, I mean, we'll just go until that dies. <laughs> yeah. I think I want uh, to be single for like a little bit and then finish some things that are on my plate and then not rush into anything because uh, I want somebody who's athletic, who's, who does sports, who climbs, who eats healthy, who's focused on, like, health and living a long time. Do you put that on, like, your Tinder preferences? or? Yeah, definitely. No, I'm not on Tinder. No, I'm just I was, you know, I was on Tinder, like, five years ago, and then your wife started swiping right on a bunch of dudes. 
And then we would go I out. I don't remember that. Yeah, like I let You would her, go out with the guys that she no, started? No, 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 no. So, 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 so we, we would... Uh, so I, th- I just gave her my phone one night. It was like her and Kaylin or whatever. Yeah. A bunch of the girls. And they just started like messaging all these dudes on my <laughs> on my Tinder. And because I was never really on it. I just was yeah. like, they, we made one and then they started doing that. And then when we would go out to like Anodyne, all these dudes would come up and talk to me. And it's probably because they matched with me yeah. on that thing and then Swipe they saw right. me in public mm. and I was talking some dirty stuff to them on the thing <laughs> and so like I had one dude try to kiss me randomly at a oh. bar and like just it was ridiculous man so it makes sense in retrospect but um yeah. so not a guy so no that's not what no you want guy. in a relationship uh, but you're not a, you're not an online dating app kind of person no I just feel weird on that stuff I like just like uh I would feel weird. Yeah, it feels I like, feel like that could get to a yeah, like, dark place quick. Yeah, I'd rather. Were just you with like, Emily like pre all of that stuff? Pre all of all of like the dating app phenomenon. Oh yeah, I was seventeen, so that sure. was like however many years ago, like ten years ago. Jeez, yeah. It's almost Christian's birthday. Yeah, my right. birthday is three in days. Three days. Yeah. Yeah. We at twenty turning twenty seven. June second. June second. Day after my daughter's birthday. Wow. Dang. It's your daughter's birthday in two days. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. What are you yeah. going to get me? <laughs> what am I going to get you? Yeah. Kayak. Okay. No, hey. no you already have kayaks. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> you knew he had a kayak. Yeah. You knew that was a good gift. It's me you. trying to plug Christian to take me kayaking someday. Oh, dude. Yeah, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> yeah. We want to go. We just got on. We Mondays. Just, Sorry. Mondays. Yeah. No, yeah. We, we have friends that were going to float the river, and they didn't invite him and I. Yeah. And that was I really interesting. I Today? Was Yesterday. Yesterday. And oh, I called my buddy. Unbelievable. I called him up. I'm like, yo, you want to go float the river? And he's like, ah, man. Ah, and then he went? I'm already there. Oh. And I was like, oh, that means he didn't invite me. <laughs> wow. You a FOMO <laughs> guy? Like time FOMO? No, guy? I'm just more of like I wanted to go kayaking guy. Yeah. And now I can't because they're already there. So I would go by myself. You wouldn't go by yourself? Yeah, that's boring. <sighs> You can't go by yourself. You need two people because you need two cars. One at the top, one at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Also, it's lonely to go by yourself. Yeah, you don't want... I mean, I guess there's some, there could be something therapeutic about going by yourself. That's true. But... Buddy system. It's, it's, it's better with buddies. Yeah. Have you ever gone to the movies? Oh, you're married now. Did you ever go to the movies by yourself? I've actually gone to the movies by myself several times. Actually, everything all, everywhere much. all at once. I went and saw that by myself. Yeah. It was great. I was like... I'll ask my my wife like when we first started going out, I think the first thing we watched together was American Psycho, oh, God. which was crazy. But also, I like in my mind, I was like, she like I just didn't think that people couldn't handle movies because that didn't make sense to me. But my wife like she's a very vivid, she's a very vivid vivid dreamer. Oh, uh, so she just yeah. So, so it gives her like her yeah, gives her. Well, I don't know, I don't know about that one. I probably did, but I mean, we watched all of Game of Thrones together, and she would just like have like she would have to watch it because like we're in too deep but she would also mm-hmm. have like but it wasn't even like the imagery yeah. in game of thrones it was all the injustice i feel like that's the stuff that she struggles uh, with like mm. like murdering innocent people or something all the lying and everything that like uh, people just using their position of power to get places just mm. just all the bad people Sounds like hollywood but yeah so like i've only i think I've, maybe it's only been twice that i've gone to the movies by myself I went and saw Joker by myself. That was the first oh, movie I saw by myself. And then I walked in and I was like, oh, I'm going to watch Joker by myself. I really want to see this, but also that makes me look like kind of a psycho. <laughs> yeah, you look like the Joker. Dude, I got yeah. to watch that with uh, Todd Phillips. No uh, way. You got, Dude, I hate you, I don't Christian, know. I, so sorry, much. I don't know who Todd Phillips is. He's Todd Phillips directed it. You yeah. got to watch it with him? Oh, really? Yeah, because he was what? doing a and a and stuff at the thing, so... Uh, was I, it like one of those surprise things or like you knew that he was going to be doing it? Yeah, it was like a, I, I don't remember. I saw it twice and he was there both times actually because it was at premieres in LA. So it was like hmm. some, that, I don't know. That's cool. He was there. You and stalk Todd Phillips and just go to anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was cool though. My buddy talked with him for a little while. I didn't really talk with him at all, but um, he did a and a uh, Yeah, I used to go to a bunch of Q&As. Like Timothy Chalamet before he blew up, we mm-hmm. asked him some stupid question. I don't remember. I asked, uh, uh, what's his name? Yeah, he used to go to watch those. Anyways, uh, I'm really cool and famous. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you've you, you gotten you a lot better. Sure, the Chinese theater. 
The what? Have you ever had a film show at the Chinese Theater in LA? Um, have so, I had one that I'm in? No, I'm just going. Have you had one that you're in there? It was a festival. Yeah, Dude, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome. I guess, yeah, I, I don't, I didn't really understand the magnitude of what that was at the time, but looking back, it's kind yeah, of Yeah, Chinese theater is like the yeah, theater. I, I didn't know that. Like, everybody's hands are in the cement yeah. down there. Yeah. Mm. No, I had a buddy, I went with a buddy to a premiere that, of his thing there, and then I went to a few different, like, I saw Robert De Niro mm. talk about something there, and then went to an after party with him. Well, he was there, and a bunch of other people were there. Yeah. I don't know, stupid L.A. Sh- sh- stuff. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's the cool thing about L.A., though, is you, like, you're there, and then there's just a bunch of other, like, people that are, like, well-known there doing stuff. And yeah. you get to be in the same room as them. And you're like, oh, well, I'm cool now. I'm popular. But it's like, it doesn't really yeah. matter. Yeah, <laughs> and that goes back to the thing. Like, you could have all the connections. You can know all the people. You blah, blah, blah. But you may mm. not blow up. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I just didn't like the traffic in L.A. Dude, same. <laughs> I have to be there tomorrow. Well, you li- like, yeah, you lived there, right? No, I lived so. there, yeah. But I, I don't like going back. Yeah. My advice if anybody moves to L.A. is it, don't live in L.A. If you have to work in L.A., just like like live like above it or like in Santa Barbara or like because the the traffic sucks anyway so you're going to be driving for an hour or two hours anyways so yeah yeah that's what I think or work remotely or live in New Mexico yeah yeah we need more good solid people in New Mexico like you like me thank you're here (laughs) don't leave ever please no but I feel like probably within the next 10 years I'm sure New Mexico will lift itself off the bottom of the list of all of those bad lists that you don't want to be the bottom of yeah. well we are the second for filming productions oh wow the best yeah second yeah. best um, I think Georgia is up there too but this is what we got to do in New Mexico for above the line workers because we have an incentive that helps bring, bring productions here for below the line which is yeah. like called a crew we need to build out an incentive for above the line so for instance mm. like let's say some production in Hollywood or some production somewhere wants to come here and shoot yeah. they get incentivized by hiring an actor like you here right and if that happens we will start to shift the uh, the desire for people to cast people here, right? From a casting perspective, from a producer perspective, from a director perspective, from a writer perspective. Yeah. If there was an incentive for that to happen, we would have more stars. We would have mm. more uh, leverage in the industry as a whole because yeah. we would be able. Because this is one of the big issues with film. I'm going to do this real quick. Sorry, I'm going to jump in. One of the big issues with uh, fi- film financing is to get a film actually financed, you have to have bankable talent, people yeah. that will sell pre-sales, and we don't have a lot of those people that live here. Mm. So we don't have a lot of like industry power here, right. but a lot of those people live in LA mm-hmm. or in Hollywood. They, you know, they live near adjacent, right. um, so they have that industry power there uh, because of that. So we have to build that out here, and if we do that successfully, then we will start to grow and be able to have our own creatives distribute and produce and make films organically. From right. Here. So. Hmm. I do know that they're like. At least, rec- I mean, recently I had an audition where I didn't know at the time, but I did it, and then I, um, I see the casting director somewhat often, and I talk to her after the fact, and she was like, "Oh yeah, that role was actually one of the top five like biggest roles in the show," and it's crazy that like you got to audition for that, being like a New Mexico yeah. actor, because usually they would just go straight to LA for that. Was it the curse? I did audition for that show, but it was no, it was. Okay. Um, I don't know if they even like like a saying the name of the show that was, but you don't have to. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. But it was knowing it was that was show. cool. Yeah, it was a show. <laughs> it was a cool, show here. Yeah, it was cool to have just been just to know that I was given that opportunity to have that big of an audition to go for. Yeah. So if I mean, hopefully that speaks volumes to what could happen, not just for me, but for New Mexico actors as a whole. Yeah. Being local in New Mexico. Yeah. I mean, I hope so. I think that yeah. that will release that will that'll give us more independence. I mean, it's fine if they bring people from LA, but it's uh, like there's talent here. Yeah, give them a chance before you just go straight to LA. Yeah, all those films, and oftentimes all those films, like no. yeah, <laughs> oftentimes there has to be some level of incentive for them to do that. Right, like, the start at least. Yeah, and then we will have our own ability. You know, it's like I have to pretend like I'm local in LA sometimes. I was mm-hmm. like, I don't want to do that. Right. So, um, like I have a mailing address out there. It's like okay, great. You know? Yeah. Um, did you say, did you say at the top of the podcast that you're gonna go to the dentist out there? Yes. Dude, he's crazy. You go to LA to go to the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> I I have a really awesome dentist. Shout out to Joshua. Um, uh, I yeah, can say the same thing with my dentist in Northern Ireland. <laughs> Big Davy Martin. <laughs> 
No, he's cool. They're cool. They're just all awesome. And, and, uh, and Do you let them know that you fly to LA yeah, to go know. to them? They know yeah, that? Okay, yeah. good. So they, I always yeah. plan it out with them. Nice. Yeah, I'm like, okay, I got to finish my Invisalign. Or, that's because it's Invisalign and stuff. So I'm like, I got to finish that. I don't, I don't know what that is. It's like uh, braces, but with just like not braces. Oh, like the plastic retainers. Plastic retainers. Oh. So I always have to schedule it out. But it's awesome because it gives me an opportunity to go back and see my friends and yeah. say, hey, I'm going to go. See Keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. Mm, check yeah. out the. Yeah. Last time I was there, <laughs> I was down the street when, uh, what's her name? Lady Gaga's dog got. What's the name of Lady Gaga's dog? Was that the question? No, I was there on the street that or the street over when her dog got kidnapped, oh, which was like wow. some big story. Dude, that she... is L.A. drama because I've never heard of that. <laughs> Nor have I. Didn't even know Lady that Gaga was a had a big dog. moment. That dude, was a that worldwide was huge, moment. No, it was. It got a huge amount of press, I though. I didn't hear about it. Because Lady no Gaga's dog gets stolen. Yeah, and the guy got shot. The guy that was walking the dog, apparently, he got shot. And then there was, like, she put out, she's like, I'll give a million dollars for whoever has information Whoa. on the dog. Okay, that's and I was, like, story. down the road, and I was like, dang, I could have found the dog and had a million dollars. Dude, could you imagine? The guy got detective. shot with Lady yeah. Gaga's dog. Yeah, and then wow. they stole the dog. Dang, okay. See? It is a big that deal. That is kind of crazy, yeah. Okay, gosh. Uh, okay, let's wrap this up. Okay, but one more. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, you have an Instagram, oh right? Do you uh, do you like sending people to your Instagram, or do you have like a website or IMDb, uh, or what do you want? I have, I mean, my personal Instagram is like a private one because I post my kids, but I mean, I do have an. So don't. I have an it. actor Dang. Instagram profile. Is it profile. the idiot abroad one? Or no, is that's, no, that's my personal. Oh, oh God. Okay. Christian, I mean, like, come on. Yeah, man. I made an acting one, but I, I've never posted on it one time because I just find it so ridiculous to have two social yeah, media profiles yeah. um i don't even know what it's called it could be like ryan wilson actor <laughs> <laughs> we'll find it we'll, yeah. we'll put it in the description down there sure anything else no i just i like what you guys are doing thanks i hope that the stamina coffee brand can and shop can open soon so Ooh, you like the coffee more than the podcast is what that's what you're no, the saying. podcast is great <laughs> But I'm addicted to coffee. <laughs> <laughs> no, hopefully soon. Yeah, we're gonna start with selling bags, and then a storefront is probably like. And a I'll, year I'll work at the Stamina Coffee place because Christian is gonna give me a floor. Dude, ride. you Benefits, can you can be the manager. I promise. That would be cool. Yeah, we actually have two locations we're working on building out. It's just working through red tape from the city. Um, one of them. <laughs> also, is, it's gonna be a long time. Yeah, it's not gonna be. That you long. have two locations. Yeah, we're working on two different locations. I mean, we have two ideas for two locations. Sure, we're sure. not, like, actively working on, like... I am actively working on it. I don't know what you're talking yeah, about, bro. Christian. What on one. About. Yeah, yeah. On both. Sure. <laughs> Anyways, um, I hope immense success for you... Thank you. ...in your career and in what you're doing. And uh, let me know in any way how I can help. Yeah, um, I love that. I'm all about trying to help and connect people and... Blah, yeah. blah, 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 is yeah. that not what the stamina podcast is all about that really is honestly that's what it's all about yeah but also we benefit from having you on and like if you, blow you up, benefit from oh because you have a foreigner in the show that's what the benefit is <laughs> dude You're an inclusive we podcast. really needed an irishman <laughs> we really needed one people were starting to think we were yeah. like you know too niche too many americans well the ac went off dang so much the audio might be so much clearer <laughs> two hours into the podcast <laughs> Um, but I really do. I hope that, and I think that you have a really good heart and a purity towards it. That's that's cool. Yeah, because I've met a lot that. of people that you know don't. So. No ulterior motive. Just yeah. dang, this is very audio. different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really, it really is like night and day. That's We're crazy. gonna li listen back to the podcast, and it's just gonna be like. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you guys are close enough. We'll save this stuff for okay. off the air. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Wait, did you have something important? No, no it's just said. about the audition process. When they like ask for clean audio, and I'm like, I can't help but hear a fan. And uh, they're like doing self tapes, and I'm like, they won't notice. But maybe oh, if someone's listening good thing we this caught far that into the podcast, the podcast, they'll be like, yeah. oh, that's such an annoying noise. But also, dude, that one ch kid from Stranger Things auditioned when he was in the hospital. He was like in a hospital bed, and his mom's filming him, and he's doing the audition tape. And he got the role. I, yeah, I saw... I saw um, Hugh Laurie's audition for House and like 
the video is just like terrible. He's just like sitting on a couch and it's completely silhouetted. You can barely see his face and it's like pixelated. Yeah. But he like got or like, role. What's mm. his name from Breaking Bad? The the dude. Uh, Pinkman? Aaron. What up, bitch? That guy. Aaron Paul. Yeah, Aaron Paul. Yeah, yeah. If you see his tape for Breaking Bad, he forgets his lines halfway through and he's just like, lines, what are the lines? And then he just keeps going and he stays in yeah. it. And it was like super sure. uh, cool. So anyways. Very important for the podcast, Christian. Yeah, okay. we caught it. Jeez, good stuff. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. It's been fun. Yeah, of course, anytime, anytime, anytime. Yeah, anytime. Uh, honestly, recurring guest. Yeah, sure. I mean, we say that to every single guest, and we haven't had one back yet, but we will. <laughs> it's still early days. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, we're only a handful of months into this, huh? We're really focusing on stamina, having stamina. Like long oh term, yeah long yeah run. yeah. Mm. yeah. So maybe like yearly, we'll have you on. Oh yeah, what day is today? <laughs> uh, June, uh, uh, May thirtieth. Two days before Four your daughter's day. birthday. Three days before Christian's birthday. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'll Put show it you in your calendar. Yeah, I will. And then we could see how your career is like changed. And although not next year, because my you know, gotta gonna be in Ireland next year <sighs> on this day probably. Really? Yeah, my brother's gonna get married. Dang. Mm. We'll just not, go to, not we'll on go this to the day, wedding. but you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we go? I don't know. I, my brother's pretty pretty picky about who he will have there. Dang it. I wonder Strip, if listeners have just dramatic. checked out at this point. Because <laughs> we tried to end this for like 30 minutes, I think. Yes. Yeah. Let's mean, just keep prior, going. Prior topics maybe were interesting, but now we're just like devolving into yeah. my brother, who's the least interesting. Now, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think this stuff's fun, though. Honestly. Yeah. Should we talk about Whole Foods? <laughs> Why would we talk about Whole Foods? I asked Ryan if he wanted to talk about Whole Foods, and he definitely did not. Do you feel like it's bad to talk about anything else if you're an actor? Like, you have to, like, play the idea that you're, like, not working another job. I just think it's dangerous territory for me to talk about Whole Foods because it could jeopardize my job. (laughs) Oh, that's fair. (laughs) Yeah. And that's, you know, benefits for my kids. Don't want to lose that. Yeah, That's true. Kristen's kind of talked some some shade on them. Yeah, because I just don't think that anybody is listening. They're listening. Dude, you don't think Bezos is in on this? Dude, he's tapped in. Yeah. I mean, I would... No, I, I don't think I could say anything that would get me in trouble. I think if we say Bezos like five times, it'll hit the algorithm. Yeah. Mm. Bezos, 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 Bezos. <laughs> Good he's not even a part of Amazon anymore, is he not? I think he I is. I don't think he is. I don't think he's a CEO anymore, but... Oh, he stepped down and then just wears a cowboy But he's hat. probably still the face of Amazon. I don't know. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, <laughs> okay. I feel, like that, I feel like that silence shows that I have no interest in talking about Whole Foods Market. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Say no more. Yeah, yeah. No, you know. I tried to get Nikki on. He said no. But uh, Nick bought me this shirt. Who's Nick? Nick's our good friend. Okay, yeah. who's Nick? Nick's the homie man. Uh, Nikki Montano. Nicolas Montano. Nicolas. Uh, Nicolas Montano. He doesn't, want, he doesn't want to come on. I I invited him and he's just like, in Does all it, honesty, dude, no res- like no disrespect, but no, I don't want to come on. He's doing that. It's, it's a bit for him. Like he like he he will just do that because it's a bit. It's not like. But I think he no genuinely balance. doesn't oh, yeah. want to do it because he doesn't like you know. But man, Nick's so cool. It would he's be got, so much fun to have him on. Yeah, he's chaotic. If he's, we can he's convince him, he's a really talented painter. He so. knows uh, Oscar. He's friends with Oscar. Oh, cool. Yeah, kind of a similar vibe. Oscar was fun to talk. Oscar to. was a lot yeah. of fun. Way better than this one. Yeah, no, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> no, honestly, this is dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, this has been good. We haven't. This is the longest podcast. This might. Been. We're milking it for sure. <laughs> I just don't want to go. Now I'm just like in it, bro. <laughs> I actually probably should get going. Okay, yeah. So, all right. All right. Goodbye, everyone. (laughs)